Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the Recipe Manager. In this week's training, I'm going to show you every step on how to create your very own recipe managing application. And that's going to be complete with dynamic categories. We're going to be able to create and load your own categories. We're going to have dynamic search replacing based on ingredient or replaced on recipe name. We are also going to have a selection where we can simply select on a recipe and it's going to load. Not only that, we are going to have up to four pictures where we can use this in incredible slider back or forth and we'll be able to select on steps, show display, add new steps, remove steps and a lot more. I cannot wait to share this with you. So let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me today. I've got a brand new training for you. We're gonna be going every strap. I'm gonna show you how to create this screen. Then we're gonna go through every line of the VBA code. Even if you have no intentions of creating your own recipe manager, there's gonna be so much to learn in this week's. You won't wanna miss a minute. We're gonna show you how to create a dynamic menu like this. It's gonna be really great. Able to show that, of course, selection. We're gonna show you this really cool slider. I'm gonna show you also also, how you can create your own recipe steps by adding steps, removing steps, displaying these pictures dynamically, and a ton more. We're going to do this screen from scratch. Then I'm going to go every line of code with you on how to create this. Oh, I hope you do like these trainings. I bring them to you absolutely free each and every Tuesday. I ask just a few things. All you need to do, one, click that subscribe button below and don't forget to click on the notification icon bell that'll ensure you get alerted when i create these trainings each and every tuesday comment below i love to hear your thoughts ideas feedback that is always helpful these ideas come from you so i'm creating them for you and also of course don't forget to hit that like button let everybody know that you did like this video i put a ton of training in these videos so i'm really happy to share them with you if you want to help support us at excel for freelancers some great ways to do that first of all i've got 77 dollars special for over 200 workbooks of my best excel workbooks you can get that in just a single zip file for just $77. It's an incredible training. Another great way, brand new, is on our Patreon. I'll be taking these applications and then adding features or adding fixes or creating a focus area and a brand new video and a brand new updated training. And that's only on our Patreon account. So if you want to get that extra help, support, and also extra training, you can do that on Patreon for just a few dollars a month. All right, let's get started. This is a sample one. I'm going to be putting this away, but you get the idea. Basically, before we get started, I basically will select seafood or whatever our categories will come from the admin screen. It's dynamic. So each one, you can have your names. Then you have your picture that's associated with that. So we're going to have that. You'll be able to select on a recipe. We'll be able to search for a recipe by name or by ingredient. So if you want to search for chicken as an ingredient, you can do that. And it's going to show you all the recipes that are associated with even this pork schnitzel or this pork but of course it does contain a chicken stock so you you know anything that contains chicken we'll be able to cr select different steps we'll be able to add pictures to steps and of course we're going to be able to create this really cool picture slider we can add up to four different pictures for every single recipe of course we're going to add new recipes save recipes delete recipes email and print recipes it's going to all be great okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this sample away and then we're going to get started it is going to be this screen is going to be somewhat from scratch what we'll do is we'll show you the basic design of it so how i came to it and then i'm going to share with you some of the the images that I created and the shapes, and then what we'll do is we'll walk through every step of code. So, But I wanna give you the idea of how you can create your own screen like this. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is give it a title, Recipe Manager. I spell things wrong quite often, so that's kind of entertaining for you to catch those. And then what we wanna do is we'll add an icon here, but we'll add that a little bit later on. And I wanna search by, but here basically I want the categories, right? So I want to know what, as you saw them, the categories, right? It can have a list of categories here. And then I also want the recipes, the result of that, as you saw there. So we're gonna have a cell recipes. There, there's been some formatting that's done here, so you can see that. And we're going to put that inside row three. And I also want the search filter. What are we gonna search by? 
buy it. So I'm going to have a dynamic drop down list. I've already put that here. Ingredient or recipe. So if we look in the data, and data validation is simply just two values ingredient and recipe name because I want to search by both of those. So that's already done already. And then what we'll do is we'll give these a color. And then down here, what I want to do is I want to have a list here, about a list of ingredients. So I'm going to do that ingredients. Everything's been formatted a little bit because this is an advanced Excel, so you pretty much understand that. But I want to make sure that you understand how we can create these ingredients. Make sure I spelled that right for a change. So then we'll have the quantity. I want to know how many the quantity of that here. So we'll put down the quantity. And then in here, I want the unit of measure. We'll abbreviate that unit of measurement, cup, a, you know, a tablespoon, a teaspoon. And then, of course, the ingredient. Ingredient. What is the exact ingredient? There. Okay, once that, I also want to have a list of our steps down, and I want to have some formats here. I want to know the recipe name. So I'm going to put in the recipe name. I want to know the name, and I want to know what it yields, right? In this case, what is it yielding? What, you know, what type of of is it you know going to be four servings or three servings or whatever we have there and then what i want to do is i want to have the nutritional information actually i'm going to put the recipe name let's put that down here recipe name down here and then put the yields down here i think that's going to be a better yields because i got four of them here to put in down yields and then next up i want the nutritional information i want that nutritional nutrition calories and protein and information okay and then next up, I want the recipe information. Recipe information. That's the long information about the recipe, as you saw in the sample. So that's going to go here in this merge center. Okay, so we have that, the yields. And I also want to put the cook time. What is the cook time? Right? How long is it going to take to cook? And also a prep in this case. And I want a rating. I forgot to show you that to you. A drop-down list, a dynamic drop-down list. I better get to that. A rating. I'm going to show that to you. Rating. And then so basically what I want is a drop-down list where we can click on the stars. So I'm going to show you that. And then also I want the category here. The category. What category is it going to be? It's the chicken or beef category. Now I have a list of categories that I'll show you soon. Okay, so that's the basic idea. So here we don't need that there. That'll just be empty so basically I have a field here so let's give these some colors and that's gonna be pretty much it it doesn't have a lot to do so here this is conditional format and that's why I got changed color so don't I'll show you that in a moment okay so we'll do this ingredient I want a main and the steps oh, I do want to put the steps here what are those steps I want those steps to show up right here and then I also want to be able to put a picture a picture here this picture right so add a step picture we're going to be able to put add step picture right here. So that picture is going to be here, and I'm going to have a browse button right here. So these are going to get a certain color here. So I'm going to drop this down. We'll format that color just to give that those header rows. And then also these two. So basically all these are going to get a specific bit of a darker color, not that dark, but something like this here. And then what I want to do is I want to have that sub information, those main information, the recipe here, these, the cook time, the category, and the rating. I want to give that just a little bit of a lighter color, something like, uh, let's take a look at this one right here. Okay, and then I'll just, I want actually a brown. I'm going to format those cells. I want to, in this case, I want a brown border. So I'm going to give a border color, and I'm going to select a specific color. We'll use this color here. And then we'll just give it a border all the way around and inside. Okay, and we'll make those updates accordingly. All right, so I like the way that that looks. And now, as you remember previously, we saw a really cool background. Now I think it's time to put that on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to page layout here. I'm going to go background. I'm going to select the background. Now I have this wood grain picture. It's very, very cool, right? This wood grain. I'm going to insert that. Okay, and that's going to give it that really cool look. That's nice, but we really don't want to see the grid lines in here. So view and then grid lines. We can undo that. Okay, so now you see how we got that look. So now what we want to do is want to color those fields in white to make sure that we can understand that those are the fields that we're going to be adding to our categories. And then we want to put the ingredients here. Those user entered fields should be in white. That lets the user know that they can enter the values in there. So that should be white. And again, we'll go with the same brown border. I'm going to format border. I'm hungry. I'm talking about butter. Brown border around there. And then I don't know why I'm hungry looking at all these recipes. Okay, that's cool. And we also want to do these two here as well. I want those in white and also the brown border. Good. 
format those cells actually format let's right click and format actually what we can do is we can just do the border we'll select the line color here that we're going to be using here sorry it's off the screen here but that's that brown one and all we need to do is just go to the borders here all right so i like the way that that looks what i want i'll have a shape up here that's called search by that's going to go up here at the top we've got categories that are going to go down here we've got recipes in shapes that are going to go down here so the categories are going to be shapes the recipes are going to be shapes that's why this is so easy and these we do need to give it that i'm going to give it that uh a little bit lighter browner color which is going to be this one right here and okay i like that though let's uh, drop down maybe a little bit lighter on that brown so we want that sub that sub yeah that one that's the one i want so notice it's sub and we'll again give it that brown border okay so it looks really good things are shaping up good there's not a whole lot of things going on here as far as a screen because there's a lot of work on the shapes so let's take a look at that so we have a step add step picture right that's going to be we'll give it that that brown color there and then they want to be able to add that picture so we're going to have that picture show up here and i want that step in white right because so they'll add the steps and then i'm going to put this brown brown here so we want that light brown color and then we'll just give it the border all the way around that's looking pretty good but now what we want to do is we want to add our shapes saving our work now i created a lot of shapes before i think it's just easier right instead of creating shapes manually i'll just unhide them because they're there they're hidden there they are so what we're going to do is we're going to show all well that's a lot easier isn't it <laughs> so let's go over what we just added so it's going to save us a lot of time because there's a there's a lot of vb i want to get into so basically all this is a text field and you know we we kind of ran out of space here but when you run out of space and you want to put another field just add a text so that's all i did search by here what are these this is a drop down list this is really cool notice how that's working already so this is a this is what i forgot to show you before this is a really cool drop down list you can select on here select on here i'm going to show you how to do that too so we've got our shapes we've got uh everything pretty much set up the way we wanted to we've got our button see how quick that was uh, basically all we have and of course if you want these icons if you want all these pictures if you want everything join our patreon i'm going to put every single picture every single icon everything you see here will be in one single zip file on our patreon so make sure you join that and i'll include the link down below for you all right so basically what i want to do is let's go over some of these sh shapes in my notes so this is just a text box all with the search by this here take a look at this this all it is again is just a simple box right it's just a simple rectangle all i did was put the less than that's all it is and for this again whoops i clicked the macro there oh well never mind and this is the same thing but this is just the greater than all it is and all i set the transparency let's take a look in there the formatting the shape and the transparency is 50 percent right so if it was 100 percent, it would be right white so it's just a 50 percent that's all it is is a rectangle and there's a macro that's going to sign that macro is going to let us switch between there all right now i'll show you of course why those pictures are some we can clear the pictures we can email the recipe okay so what do we want to do now i want to be able to enter a recipe but the first thing we want to do is enter some categories right right i want to have a macro that's going to load all of our categories now what are our categories by our categories let's go over briefly at the admin screen see what we have here I've got a folder called category pictures. This is the folder that all of our pictures are going to be stored in right here. So if we take a look at this here, I've got inside my folder, we've got food categories and I've got a folder with six food categories, beef, chicken, desserts, pasta. Okay, so those are all the pictures that I wanna go in the categories. And of course, I'm gonna include these pictures on our Patreon, so don't worry. I've got recipe pictures. These are pictures that are specifically for the recipes, right? Every recipe has up to four pictures. And of course we can switch with that slider so we've got that also i've got step pictures remember each step can have its own picture so i've got step pictures too so and then i've got some inform just information some helpful information okay so that's what we got so we got really folder so i want to know what folder our categories are going to be stored in what's folder okay i also want to know what folder our recipe pictures are going to be stored in i want to know what folder our step pictures remember got three different folders three different folders so i want to map all those folders here so when you get this file and you go on patreon and you download all this great stuff make sure that you also put in whatever folders you are and i also have a default 
default recipe uh, picture. And that means basically I want to set up a, a specific picture. This is the picture here. I want to set, if there's no picture for the recipe, I want to set up some kind of a picture. And I'm using this as our default. So you'll see that when I clear the picture out, or if the recipe doesn't have any pictures, I want to set this one as the default. So we're going to use that picture. And I need to map this entire picture, including the folder and the name, into a specific cell. So that's C6. That is the entire file path of that default picture. Also, I've got the list of categories. We'll be able to loop through these as you add categories. And as you add pictures for each category, they'll be created dynamically. And you can click this button, refresh, and it's going to do just that. If I click that button now, it's going to automatically create those categories here because the macros are already completed. So we're going to go over that macro. Of course, we're going to be going over every macro and every field, every formula. So don't worry. It's going to be a long training. So I hope you got your coffee or your beverage of choice. So that's exactly what this macro is going to do. It's going to refresh and create those categories. I've got the quantities. These are going to really be helpful for when we want to add a specific ingredient. We need to know how much. One eighth, one sixth, and I've got the values associated here. Now these values, we're not really going to use in this specific training, but I think it could be very, very helpful in the future. So I combine them so that one eighth, so that if we're using, if we want to combine values or we want to create count calories or something like that, we want to convert this into a value, it can be very helpful. But basically, we're going to use a drop down list. When we want to select quantities for recipe items, we need to know one sixth. And then we also need the unit of measure. It is one eighth cup, one quarter cup, one drop, whatever. So I've got all these names and the abbreviation, right? That's going to be helpful. Again, we're not going to be using this really, but could be really helpful in the future. So I like to add things in, even if I don't use them all, because you may want to use them. So I put them in here for you when you download this application for free using the links in the description below. So we've got that. That's on our admin screen. That's basically it. That's all I have there. I've got a recipe database. I've got up to 20 recipes. And then each recipe name, they have a category that's associated with it, the yields, the cook time, the rating. Now, notice that the rating is four or five or whatever it is, but when we show it and we load it, it's going to actually show the stars instead, right? So it's going to be really cool. So if, if I save a recipe as three stars, that's going to be putting a three here. Otherwise, it's going to be four or five, whatever the rating is, okay? We've got nutrition information, recipe information, and then we have up to four pictures per recipe, picture one, two, three, and four. Okay. Remember, we'll be able to scroll through those pictures just like this. Okay, So I'll show you how to do that very, very soon. So that's it for recipes. Now, each recipe has its own ingredients. right? We've got a list of ingredients. We have unlimited ingredients per recipe. So to do that, of course, we need to track all of those recipes. right? So each recipe has its own ID number, unique ID here. And so, for example, if I want to know all of the ingredients for the butter chicken, I need to know what is that recipe ID. So that would be stored here. So all the ingredients up to here are for that butter chicken. I think I'll have that for dinner. So natural yogurt, lemon juice, so all these are. Notice the quantities. Notice the units of measure, right? We just went over that. The row, what is the row? This is the ingredient row. That's the row that's going to appear here, row 12. 13, 14, and 15, right? So that's going to appear. As we add ingredients here, right, we can add specific ingredients, assuming that we have something. It, we can simply add ingredients for each one of our recipes, just like this. Now, what I'm going to do is I've got another list of thousands of foods, and I'm going to include that in our Patreon update. So I'll make sure to put those foods, I don't I think it's about six, 7,000 different ingredients. I'll include that so you don't have to even type that in. They'll be here in a drop down list, or I'll make it autocomplete so you can start typing. So that's going to be, I'll put that on Patreon as well. All right. So let's take a look here. So basically we have all that so we can enter those ingredients and all those ingredients are stored here. So I need to know the row. Remember the row of the recipe, 12, so that when you enter a certain recipe on a certain row, it comes back to that exact same row. And I'm using conditional formatting here so that we'll see. Okay, so back into the recipes. And of course, I need to know the database row. That's the current row, five, six, seven, whatever it is, the row that it's stored on, that's really important. And lastly, I have the steps. Each recipe, again, each recipe has a set of steps. So here's the recipe ID. So that butter chicken, in this case, it has six different steps. 
and the step number one two three four we need to track that i also need to know the text what's in a large and i need to know a picture associated with this step if it has a picture and of course the row that is associated the database row again that's it so when we combine that remember when i load this recipe and i'm going to load all the information for that recipe the name the category then what i'm going to do is i'm going to load all the ingredients i'm going to run an advanced filter I only want to know those ingredients for recipe number one. So I'll put it a criteria in here. It's going to return all those results for that. And I'm going to bring those ingredients in. I'm going to do the same thing for the steps, for the recipe steps. I'm going to put in a criteria. I'm going to load only those steps. And what we're going to do is we're going to load them in right here in this recipe. Of course, those are going to be in shapes because it's a lot more flexible. Notice we're not using cells for those. We're going to be using shapes. Okay, cool. So that's pretty much it. Now we've got to kind of got the overview and the good thing is we've got a working version that we can work on i'll be going over every line in this one there's so much code i won't be typing out the code unless i find a mistake but i will be going over every line of code that's going to help keep these trainings maybe two hours i don't know about this training we'll see but uh, that's kind of what i'm aiming for on this one because it's a, a good amount of code and there's so many cool things in here remember you don't have to create this recipe manager but i'm going to show you think of ways that you can create this using your own applications your own ideas based Basically, it's just a, a ton of tricks. There's some techniques and some great tips that you can learn to build your own application. So I want to see you use these techniques in your own application, whatever you like. So the first thing you saw, the macro that ran already, that's these categories. Let's go into that macro and see how we generate categories. But before we do that, I want to be able to show you a few things that we're going to go. So for these categories here, we're going to need a sample, right? If I'm creating this dynamically, if I'm creating this shape, I need to start with something. Well, I'm starting with this circle. Now, this circle doesn't necessarily need to be filled, right? This circle here is just a simple circle with a border. All I've done is given it a border and a picture. If I were to manually insert a picture, not using VBA, I would go inside the format picture, and then I'd go into fill, and I'd select a picture. I'd insert a file, and it'd select a specific picture. If I wanted to put that wood grain, I don't know why I would, but if I wanted to do, I could put that wood grain in here. So all we need to do and if i want to just put no fill i could put no fill solid fill either way so we'll keep it like that because it's vba that's going to put that picture in vba will take care of it so it doesn't need to start off with a picture but what i do want is i want to sample just exactly the way the right size the right shape the right width everything so all i need to do this call this one called category sample picture all i need to do is duplicate that and then make the updates accordingly okay and i also want the name notice there's a text name now this is again just a shape here it's this shape here let's bring it out here i'm going to bring it over here so you can see it and this particular shape here also has simply a fill color right and it's got a transparency of it should be around 50 percent right whatever you want so this is just a simple shape simple text box with a transparency of 50 percent that's all it is on this chicken right and so this this specific name is called category sample name so these are kept they're hidden but it is these that we're going to use to create that category so all i really need to do is do a few things one i need to know the folder that we're going to have those categories two i need to know the last row and then i'm going to loop through these rows i'm going to say okay all the rows that have values i'm going to look for a picture this a picture called chicken inside this if it's found i'm going to create a circle i'm going to put the picture inside that circle and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a text box and i'm going to give it that name and that's just how we get this chicken so let's take a look inside vba and see exactly how we do that from the developers tab in visual basic you can do alt f11 we'll get you there now what i have here in this application is pretty much two modules and then we have one based on the sheet code and one based on the recipe so we're going to start off in the sheet code here and we have one here called let's take a look right here this one's one build category menu this is the macro that ran as soon as i click this button this button here if we sign the macro we see it's build category menu so that's the macro that we're going to be focusing on right now okay now i'm going to bring this down so we can see this both the admin screen and the code at the same time and you can see everything okay so we have that and we've got a few different sheets so you see so basically we're just going to build that category menu the first thing we need to do is if there's any shapes i need to delete them right we're recreating these so any of these menu shapes here i need to delete but i have to make sure that there's something unique about that right they're called everything in this is called continue called has the words category category picture 
or category name, NAM in this case, NAM specifically, NAM. So notice that the sample doesn't have the full word category. And there's a reason because if I'm going to delete, I only want to delete the shapes with the name, full name category. Right? Only those that I want to delete because before I rewrite these, maybe I've added a picture, maybe I've changed the name, I want to delete everything here, all six of those pictures, all six of those text boxes. So I want to delete those. And so to do that, I just need to check for every specific shape in a sheet. So the first thing what I want to do is to do that is delete that. I want to make sure that, of course, we do have a folder inside that. I want to make sure that we have an accurate folder. If we don't have a folder here for pictures, then of course, there's nothing we can do. So the first line of code is to do just that. If the admin range C3 equals empty or the directory of the admin C3, VB directory, in other words, is it a correct path? admin c3 vb directory this would mean incorrect path if that's empty there's something wrong with the path then let the user know please select an add or correct packet right so if i try to run that code and i change just one letter on here and i try to run that code now it's going to give me that error it's going to say hey you know please select correct category picture folder in the admin screen right because i've i've misnamed this purposely so that's why it's not working so we need to know if there's any issue so that notification will come up okay now, once we have that, what I want to do is I want to take that category folder, I want to put it in a string variable called category folder. All of my variables have been defined up here. Okay, I'll go over them one by one as we get to them. So the category file, this is a, again, this is a string variable. Let's go back into the macro here. Admin C3, and what I want to do is I want to add a backslash on to that string. That's the entire path of the category folder. Now we have a perfect file name. All we need to do is add on the picture and we have the full correct file path of the picture. But again, I need to know the last row of the categories. If we're going to be looping through all of these, I need to know the last row. In this case, it's 14. So we can use a single line of code to do just that, to get us that last row. And that is last category row equals admin B34 and XL up, the last category row. If for some reason the last category row is less than nine, then of course we need to know, let the user know, to make sure to add some users in the admin screen here. So if it's less than nine, that means there's no categories. Assuming that they have categories, we can move on. We're gonna focus on the recipe screen, recipes. This is the VBA name for this that I've added. It's called recipes. Notice the name, they're both the same recipes. We're gonna focus on that sheet right there. With each category shape this has been dimensioned as a shape up here just like this cat shape as shape so now that i've dimensioned it as a shape i know it's a shape vba knows it's a shape so we can work with it just as that as a shape so to do that we can say for each category shape in dot shapes recipes dot shapes that means for every single shape if the category name if the name of that shape the name of that shape contains the letters category, the string category, it does not equal zero, that means it's been found in that shape, then delete the shape. We can delete it. We're not deleting the sample, we're just deleting it. So we're gonna do that for every single shape. Once we have done that, what I wanna do is I wanna set the row. Now I'm gonna be placing these categories about four rows apart. Notice the first one goes on four, right? The second one right on nine, so about five rows apart here. But I wanna set the first one, the first one, the first row is gonna be on four. Then what I'll do is I'll increase it five. The next one will go to nine. Then the next one will go to 14, right? So I'm gonna put five rows in between, but I need that starting row. It's gonna be on row four, because that's gonna tell us where to place it. So we're gonna set that initial row to the recipe category row equals four. Set the initial category row. And then we're gonna run that loop from nine to the last category row. Remember that loop, as we mentioned, starting here in nine, going all the way to the last, in this case, 14. I need to run the loop because I need to get the picture and I need to get the name, and I need to put that information in those shapes. So we do just that inside this. So in this case, we're gonna set the picture name to the admin C in the cell row. This is the name of the picture, okay? File picture name, okay? Then this is, of course, I need to set up this, you know, this is the file, path the full file path remember there's that category folder combined with that name is going to be the full file picture path right picture path that's the full file okay now what i want to do is i want to make sure that that's accurate to make sure if the directory picture file equals empty then go to next right we're just going to go to we're just going to skip all of this and go right here right we're not going to put anything down here that's all we're going to be doing i guess we could go right here in other words we're going to 
and the picture, but I guess we could put in the text right here, right? So this is for the picture here. This is for the text. So we can skip that and just go to the text. In other words, no picture, but we do have the text. Okay, so then we're going to skip, if we're going to skip that picture, next category, which is here. But we don't want to, assuming that we do have a correct file path name, then we want to do the following. What I want to do, again, as I mentioned, I want to take this category sample and I want to duplicate it. When I have the duplicate, I want to name that duplicate. I want to give it a specific name. What name do I want to give it? I want to give it a name that I would understand. So in this case, it's going to be category picture 9. Why is it 9? Because I want to base it on this row here or this row or this row. That way I know what's been selected, right? So I'm going to give it a specific name and a, a number. So we're going to do just that here with the following lines of code. If the directory picture, oh, we went over that. Here, shapes, category sample picture, we're going to duplicate it. Then we're going to assign it a name, a unique name. It's going to always start out with category pick, and then we're going to add a category row. In the first case, it's going to be nine. Once we have assigned that to our new shape, we can then work with it. So with shapes, category picture, category row. The first thing I want to do is place the left position. It's going to be equal to the recipes. In other words, I got to call out the sheet name again because I'm inside another width. So this time I have to call out that sheet name. D4, right? The left, in this case, right? The left position, we're going to use an exact cell. The four doesn't necessarily matter. The D does matter, okay? Plus 16. It means I don't exactly directly want it right on D, right? I want to move it over about 16 pixels to the right. So notice it. If it were exactly on the right, it'd be about here, okay? So we don't want it there right on the right side we want it moved over to the right, right? Not exactly on the left side of the cell, right? Or to the right of that cell border. We want it in the middle. So we're going to bring it over 16 pixels to the right. Left plus 16 will get us there. Then I want to set the top position. To do that, what I want is also D and whatever row. Remember, we started our row off here on 4, the recipe category row. It's going to start off on 4, then it's going to grow. So our first row, we're going to set it to whatever that row is, the top position of that row. This is going to set our top position, set top position, and this is going to set our left position. Set left position. Then what I want to do is I want to actually fill that picture and we've just duplicated. So fill with picture. And we can do that with just a line of code. I put in with, that's automatically created this end with, but we don't need that. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill, we're going to fill that shape. This shape, we're filling it. What are we filling it with? We're filling it with the user picture. What is the file path of that picture that's now accurate? Picture file name. That fills it with that picture. Then what I want to do is I want to assign a macro to that. We're going to go over that macro next. That's the macro that happens when I actually select one of those. So it is that macro that's going to load those recipes up here once we select on something. So I want to assign it a macro. So that macro, regardless of whether I select the name or whether I select the picture. Okay, so that, that macro, the name is called category select. That's the next macro that we're going to be going after this. Okay, so that's it. So that's all we need to do with the picture. Now we're going to focus on the name, right? We've added the picture, we've positioned it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create this little text box. Again, all we're doing here is simply copying this, duplicating this sample text, and then giving it that name, similar, and then just positioning it. So the first thing shapes category sample name, duplicating that category name and category row. Okay, again, giving it that unique row with, as we loop through all the rows. Then we can focus just on that shape. We're going to give it the left position exactly on the left in this time, right? Now moving it over, D4. And we're going to set the top position. Now the top position is going to be the top position of the row plus the height of whatever that picture is, right? So basically what I want to do is I want to put get this top position, right? It's not going to be this. It's going to be this row plus what? Plus the height of this, the height of the picture, right? I want to know the height plus a little bit more, right? So that's what's going to drop it down. So that's all we do. The height of that picture, remember that picture that we just created here, category picture plus one, plus one pixel. It's going to drop it down. That is the, that's going to set the top position of that text box set top position of the text box, okay? And this is, of course, going to set the left position, set left position. So now that we have that, all we need to do is now we need to put in the text, right? Right here we have something called chicken dishes. We could put in, I can put in sample text. It doesn't matter because it's going to be changed, but it's good to know that it's a sample. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to replace whatever text is here with the 
actual name. Where are we going to find that? Of course, that's located in B, but we've already turned it into a variable, right? We already have it, or we actually we don't we didn't put it in a variable. That's okay. Text frame is going to be B, just as I mentioned, and the category row. As we loop through those category rows, we're going to set the text, right? Then again, we're going to assign it that same marker, the same marker that we did assign it up here to this picture. So both the picture and the text box are assigned the same macro. Then all we need to do is increment the rows by five. Remember, we're going to increment every category. We're going to increase by five. The first one starts on row four here. Second one goes to nine, and then, of course, 14, and so on and so forth. So that's it. That's all we need to do to set those categories. So when we run that macro here, and we can run it, and it's going to automatically create those nice and organized categories. Okay. Now, notice that when we actually select one, something happens. right? What we're going to do is we're going to load this. So what do I really want? to do when I do this. Well, that's the macro that we're going to go right now. And basically what I want to do is I want to determine what category was selected. Was it chicken? Was it beef? And I want to run an advanced filter. We have a lot of recipes here, but I want to know only those categories that we've selected, right? So how do we do that? How do we know which one? Well, we're going to run an advanced filter. If I determine what was selected, I can put that in some criteria. I can put that in a category right here. I can then run an advanced filter based on that, and then I can know exactly what was selected based on that advanced filter and have those results come here. So the, all we need to do is get that chicken or whatever they select. If it's beef, I need to get that beef and I need to put it directly inside P3. So how are we going to get that? Well, we don't, we, what, how, what do we know? We know what, the, we're going to know what they've selected, right? So if I know category pick was selected or I know category pick 10, right? What if I remove the text? What if I remove all these first letters here? It's going to leave me with 10. If I know that it's 10, they've selected 10, all I need to do is look here for B and whatever row 10 or B and whatever row right 11. Whatever that number is, if I extract that number. Now also notice another thing. Notice how category pick has the same number of characters as category name, N-A-M, right? Same number of characters. So if I remove those characters, if I know what they've selected and I remove those characters using the replace, it's going to leave me with the number. No matter how many digits that number is, it's going to leave me with that number. And that's just what we're going to do inside the code. So that's the next macro that we're going to run. It's that macro that's been assigned to that. So it's called category select. And just like we did before with the categories, this time in the recipe, we're also going to create a sample. Notice that I've got a sample here. Let's bring that out where it's a little bit more visible here, right here. And I've got a shape here, but it's basically just a text box called sample recipe name. And again, if I go in the format, the shapes, you can see the transparency is set to 50%. It's going to give us that nice look. As opposed to using cells, right, here we have a really nice look. If we can use shapes, one, we can create this really nice menu effect where we don't have to select on a cell, right, and two, we get this nice uh, transparency which really looks good against the back wood and of course we can also change the color really easily when they select it we can then change a the color okay whoops I did it too quick but you get the point there so there we go so basically that's all we have to do and yes it's working right remember the macros are all working so basically the idea is when we use shapes we can make it white so I did want to show you that but we need again to start with a sample and we'll call, let's why don't we give this a, something a little bit more clear call this sample right recipe recipe name okay that using this sample all we need to do and we can set the width as to whatever we want because it's going to automatically be set to let's just say there so it's going to be set based on this column right i want the width if i reduce this column the shape's going to be reduced so again with this shape all i need to do is duplicate and i've just put it over here duplicate that shape and then create the information. So that's just what we're going to do in there. But how do we know what shape to create? Well, when we run that advanced filter, we're going to get all of those chicken recipes, right? Then all I need to do is loop through those and simply take whatever the recipe name is and put it directly inside that shape as a text box. And that's just what we're going to do inside the VBA. But the first thing what we want to do is, of course, remove any specific recipes that have already been there. So each one of these has a distinct name called recipe name, recipe name, right? So anything that contains recipe name, again, we've given it the row and it's distinct numbered that. So we know it. And we could probably increase these a little bit, but you know, for the training, it's fine. So we've given this a name, and what I want to do is I want to delete all those first. So we do that again to do that for each category shape, right? The first thing, oh, first thing, what I want to do is I want to extract that row, 
remember? When we click a category, I need to know, is it 10, right? Or is it 9? Is it 10? Is it 11, right? Because I've got to know the row that's been associated with that. So the first thing I want to do is extract that row. And we can do that with a single line of code. This is a long variable here equals, we're using the replace. Remember, what I want to do is I want to get those 11 characters, the first 11 characters, and I want to remove them. How do I do that? Well, I can use the replace command. Basically, we're replacing something, right? What are we replacing? We're going to take the application caller. The application caller is the name of the shape that called the macro. Remember, anytime you try to run this macro right here, you're going to get an error. Why is that? It's going to say, what's wrong? Because Why? Because I called the macro from here. That's not going to work. No, that means there's nothing that called this macro, right? So it's going to create an error. But when, of course, when you run it from a shape, there's an actual shape name. In this case, it's called category pick 11. So all we're going to do is we're going to take the left of that name and we're going to remove the 11 characters. We're going to replace the left 11 characters. We're going to replace it with nothing. When we do that, it ex leaves only the category row. Extract category row from shape name. That's all we're doing. And that's regardless. Notice this also has the same thing, although it's a different name, but it's got the same 11 characters. It starts with the same 11 characters, leaving us the nine. That's what we want. So that way, whether it's one digit in this nine, or in case it's two digits, in case it's, it won't matter because we're removing the first 11 characters and leaving us with whatever's left. In that case, it's the number. So once we have that number, we're going to put it into a variable. It's going to be called category row. Now we're ready to remove all the shapes. So for each category shape in receive shape, what I want to do is I want to, of course, I want to remove all of recipe names. So for every one of shape, if it includes the text recipe name, basically it's going to be all of these, right? When I select a new one, I need to remove all the old ones, right? So to do that, anything that contains recipe name, we need to remove. So we do that with this code. If in string category name, equals recipe name does not equal zero. That means the shape does contain these words. Just make sure when you do these commands, you want to make sure any other shape doesn't have that recipe name. Otherwise, it's going to be deleted too. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to delete the shape. And then I want to do another thing. Notice when I click here, right, I want this to the category to go white. I want the category that go away. How do we do that? Well, if we know that we've clicked on nine, we know it. So the category name, in other words, we've got this variable already inside a variable. If I combine this category name with this, we know which one to make it white, right? So how do we do that? Well, the first thing what we do is if the in string category name, I want to fill all of those clear. So in other words, if I click this one, right? And I want to make sure that this one goes back to white. Notice that it goes back to that transparency. The best way to do that is to take all of them, make them all, all the shape, all this one, this one, this one, make sure they all go to 50% transparency, right? I want to go to 50%. So if I select one, right, if I select this one, beef, I need to make sure that if I select chicken, beef goes back to that 50% transparency. So how do I know? Well, I don't really know which one was white before. We don't, I don't keep track of that. So all I need to do is make all of them 50% transparency. And then the one that I did select, make that zero, transparency zero, which is the full color. So we do that right here. So that means for for every single shape that can, contains the word category name, every single shape, if it does not equal zero, means there's a shape that contains that, then what we're going to do is category shape fill transparency equals five. So basically, this single line of code, all it does is it takes every single name here and makes it a 50% transparency. That's all. That's all it does here. 50% transparency. So the next thing we'll have to do down below is make sure that the one we selected goes to 0% transparency. So we're going to do that a little bit down here. So we're just going to loop through that. Now we know the category row. We've selected that. If we know the row and we know the, the category name, if we combine those two here, we know which one to fill. For example, if I've selected beef, right, and I know that I've selected 10, right, if I combine 10, I've extracted that 10. If I combine that 10 with the words category name, I know exactly which shape to color white. So that's just what we're doing in here. We're going to color that white. So recipe shapes, category name, category row, fill transparency equals zero. That means full color, full color. 100 would be full transparency, right? 100 would be invisible. Full color 
no transparency, okay? And then this is half transparency. This is, we would call this 50% transparency. So 50% transparency. So we've got that. So that's how we do it. So now we've colored the right one. So now what I wanna do is I wanna clear any searches. If there's anything in A2, I wanna make sure to clear that, right? And then what I want to do is, I want, because there's gonna be different types of searches, I'll show you that a little bit later on. So now we're gonna focus on the recipe database, right? That's where we're gonna run our advanced filter. So the first thing what I want to do is place that criteria. This is called the criteria. I wanna place that. How do we know what the criteria is, right? Remember, we know the category row, right? So we know where it's going to go. It's gonna go directly inside P3. In P3, what do I wanna do? I wanna get that category number. If that category number is 10, then I know admin B and the category row, gonna place that directly inside P3. So that's just what we do inside the code. P3 equals the admin B in the category row, the category criteria. Now I need to get the last row of the database, right? I need to run that advanced filter based on the last row. We're gonna run that advanced filter. Our criteria is gonna be P2 through P3, and we want the results to come into S2 through S3. So we do all of that with a single line of code. A3 through C, this is, remember, based on the recipe database, including the headers, running an advanced filter. We're gonna copy that to another location. We're gonna run that criteria. Again, that criteria is P2 through P3, as you see above. And we want those results to come into S2 through T2. S2 through T2, that's where we're gonna results. Then what we need to do is determine, do we have any results? Usually do it. So we're gonna get the last row of the results. In this case, I wanna know the last row of S, right? So in this case, the last row, Blast result row, we're gonna put that into a long variable. It's gonna be S999. That's gonna be the last row of our results. If it is less than three, then we have no results. We can exit the sub. Assuming that we do have results, what we wanna do is we wanna set the initial row. Remember, again, we're placing shapes. We're gonna place shapes based on our initial row. So our starting row is gonna be four. Then we're gonna go to five, six, seven, eight. So we're just gonna increment the rows based on that. So we need to set that initial row, just like we did the categories. In this case, the recipes is going also going to be Four. Okay, and once we get that, we'll just have it. Then we can then we increment everything. I spelled something or nutrish. I forgot a T here. I told you I'd forget it. So continuing on with our code, we're going to set that initial recipe row, and then we're going to loop through our results. Right? I need to loop through all of the results based on that. So starting in three, going all the way to the last row, and we're going to bring all that in. So the last results row. First of all, again, we're going to sh that sample recipe name, that shape that you saw right here. We need to duplicate that. That's this shape right here. I need to duplicate that, and then we're going to update it. So with recipes, shapes, recipe name, and the result row, right? We're gonna write, I wanna position that. It's gonna be based on column E and the left, or the top position of the left, right? All based on the recipe row right here. And then I wanna set the width. Just in case we change the width of the column here, I wanna make sure that the width. So if I wanna increase that, right? And notice if I run that again here, that width is automatically gonna be adjusted based on that, okay? So that's very, very important. I wanna make sure that the width is contained. So all we need to do is rerun it and that width is automatically going to adjust. So we do that here. The width is gonna be based on whatever column E, that width of column E, is gonna automatically be the same width of the shape. Then I need to add the text in the box. Well, that's simple. The text frame, text range, text is gonna to equal to the recipe database. In other words, I need to remember, I need to call out our sheet again because I'm inside another width. The T and the result row. So as we loop through these rows, this is going to be the name, this name, name, name. So we're going to get all the names here, bringing them into the text box. And we just loop through that, incrementing the row by one as we do. The first row is going to be four, five, and six. So that's all we need to do. And we, of course, we do need to assign a macro to it, right? And this is going to be another macro called recipe select. When I select that recipe, I want to load that recipe, which we're going to be going over very soon. I want a macro because when I select that recipe, I want that recipe to load in. So we do just that with this. Great. All right. So recipe search and filter. We can do that now. So I want to show you that while we're going down. How do we do that? Well, basically, that's going to be a change event. If I want to search for a recipe by, by, by ingredient or by recipe name, then I want that 
result to come here. So if I want to search beef, I want to know all the recipes that have beef inside the recipe. So that's going to be based on a change event. Notice that we have all the recipes that came out, even creamy meatballs, right? That's not part of the name, but you'll notice inside the ingredients, we do have something called beef. So which right here called beef stock, right? So that's a recipe that uses beef stock. So beef is one of the recipes. So how do we do that? Well, that's based on a change event. Notice E2 is the change event. So when we make a change to E2, we want something to happen. But we also have another one, right? What if we search by recipe name, right? If we search by recipe name, double click and into that, I want the recipes to restart based on that. So now we're searching by recipe name. Notice that we only have four recipes where beef is in the name. So there's we've got two different types of searches based on this option right here. Search by here, ingredient or recipe name. So how do we do that? Well, of course, the first thing we do is with a change event on E2. So let's go inside the code and we're going to go into the recipes here. Here, and we're going to take a look at the change worksheet change event, right? This is going to be found here worksheet, worksheet, and then change event, right? So when the user makes a change to E2, and E2 is not, not nothing, what we want to do is we want to run a macro called recipe search filter, recipe search filter. When I go to the definition, that's going to bring us to the sheet macro, it's called recipe search filter. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing we do when we have a brand new search, we need to remove all of the existing results. So I need to remove all those shapes just as we did before, running a loop, any shape that contains the word recipe name, we want to remove that, deleting those shapes. Okay, so we're going to run that loop. That's going to delete all of those recipes. It's going to delete all of these right here. Every single one of those will be deleted with that little bit of code. Once we have that, what I need to do is I need to determine, is it based on recipe name or is it based on ingredient? Because there are going to be two, we're running a base. One, we're going to be running that advanced filter based on this database here, the recipe database here. The other one, we're going to be running the macro and the filter based on the ingredient database. So they're going to be using two different databases, so I need to specify which one. If the recipe D2 equals recipe name, then we're going to be recipe name, then we're going to be running that advanced filter based on our recipe database, right? It's based on this recipe name. I want to look in this name to see if those keywords are found using advanced filters. So we're going to be running that something like this. So basically containing the word beef. So to do that, what I need to do is I need to add asterisk before and after. So all I need to do is use a formula for that. And it's right here, equals asterisk and recipes E2 and asterisk, okay? So what that's going to do, regardless of what the user puts in, it is going to add asterisk. So that means any recipe name containing where beef is found inside that recipe name, I want to return those results and I want to put them right here. However, if it's an ingredient, what I want to do is the same thing here, the same code, but this time what I want to do is I want to know any recipe in which the ingredient was found, right? So if it's been found, I want to know the results of that. So I want those results to come here. The recipe name, right? I want those, uh, the recipe IDs, and I want to bring down the recipe names of any recipe there. So how do we do that? Well, I'll go over each one with you inside the code. The first thing is we're going to focus on the recipe name, and that's going to be this database right here. So again, all we need to do is get the last row and run an advanced filter. So we're going to do just that. Last row based on the recipe database. The last row is going to be equal to them. If it's less than three, then exit the sub. So it's the same thing we went over. We're running an advanced filter, but this time the advanced filter criteria is going to be based on Q2 through Q3. Q2 through Q3. Then we're going to copy that again, just like we did before, S2 to T2, and we're going to get those results. I'm going to determine the last result row based on column S. And then if the mess, if it's less than three, we do want to alert the user that no results were found, right? So in case that happens, let the user know no results are found and exit the sub because there's nothing. That means there's no results here. It's less than three. Let the user know. Assuming that we do have results, again, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to set our initial recipe row. We're going to run our loop for results three to the last results row. We're going to duplicate that just as we did before. We're assigning it a name. We're going to assign that result row. I want to know that result row. This time I want to the result row because when I want to look it up, I need to know that result row. Very, very important. So we've got that result row here. Again, we're going to do the same thing, assigning it the same positions, 
setting it to the same column with setting the text this time the text is going to be based on again what's in t in the result row that text here t in the result row i want to know that text and the name keep in mind the name of that shape recipe and the result row that name is going to come in handy when we load that in okay and then i want to assign a macro called select macro okay so that's it we're incrementing the row so we're going to basically doing the same thing we're just simply building this list of shapes based on these list of results okay that's great perfect but what if it is so that's all but what if it's a search by ingredient else ingredient then we need to do something different we're going to be focused on the ingredient database row this time what i want to do is i want to clear some results so here inside the ingredients i want to clear any previous results okay from q3 all the way down to r right i want to clear those results now what i want to do is run an advanced filter based on this criteria here but notice that we don't have the recipe names here right? we don't have any recipe names here we only have ingredients here we do have the recipe ids so what i want to do is i want to return all the recipe ids where let's say beef is found if beef is found i want to return the id those results are going to come right here then what i do is i have a list of recipe ids but i don't need the recipe ids what i really need is recipe name how can we get the recipe name from the recipe id well we can use named ranges so if we take a look inside the formulas name manager we have two named ranges that i'm going to talk about recipe id is a dynamic named range based on the recipe id using the offset formula recipe name is very similar using the offset formula recipe name so i've got those two dynamic named ranges okay once i have those i can easily extract that name using a formula so if we take a look at this formula if there's an error we're going to index we're going to index that recipe name it's going to be based on the match right i need to know the row where can i find that recipe name well we're going to match based on the recipe id what's in q3 and then we want an exact match, so we're going to use zero. And I want to use a single column. And if there's an error, it's going to be empty. So all I need to do is determine the last row. I need to copy this, basically copy this formula, and bring it all the way down here. But it's, we can do a formula to formula exchange as long as our formula here is based on our first row. Then I can just simply say the formula of these is equal to the formula of this. And it's going to bring in, that's going to extract all of it and bring that name down. Once I have that name, I can then run a loop just as we did before, running a loop. So if I put in the recipe name, in this case ingredient, and double click on here, it's going to automatically run that. And then our results, we can then loop through those results and down like that. So that's just what we do inside the code. So the last row, again, based on the ingredient database, this time we're focused on that ingredient database database we're going to get that last row if it's less than three eggs of the sub we're running an advanced filter this time a2 through d a2 i only need from a to d only those ingredients nothing else we don't need to go beyond here i want the criteria to be based on h2 through h3 right here h2 through h3 we're going to copy it to the range q2 remember i'm only copying those ids the names will come from the formula so we're only bringing those results into q2 and we're going to determine the last row so once we brought in our results into q2 those are the ids only we're going to get the last row if it's less than three then let let the user know no results are found and exit the sub if it is not less than three then i need to bring in that formula using column r again r3 through r in the last results row dot formula equals the formula in r1 i can do that with one single line of code bring over the recipe formula in, as opposed to copy and paste or something like that so this is a little bit easier and then we're, the rest is exactly the same we're going to set our initial row we're going to run through our loop we're going to duplicate that sample shape we're going to work with it, setting the left position, the top position, the width, and setting the name. This time, the name is going to be based on the, remember, we need to call out that sheet again because we're inside another width. Whatever's in R in the result row, making sure that that result row, now keep this in mind, we have to understand that if we're in a search, right, if I need to know, right, if I click on be strong enough, I need to know, notice that this result row is three, right? So we need to know if it's based on this search result, ingredients and beef. So it's based on this search result. So I need to know what result row because I'm going to need to basically extract that ID. That ID is going to come from Q. So keep that in mind. If I know the row, 
three, I know the queue and whatever row, that ID is going to come in handy because we need to load that recipe based on that ID. Okay, very good. So we've gone through that. We understand how the filter works, and that's all we need to do, simply that. So everything's the same. We're just going to increment throw, and that's going to automatically create menus and filter our recipes based on either ingredients or based on recipe names. Okay, so far we've been over how to create those categories, how to assign the macros, how to recipe. But now what I want to do is I want to show you exactly how we are going to load in those recipes with just a click. So that we're going to cover now. And of course, that's the macro that has now been assigned to this, this recipe select. That's the macro that we're going to go over now when we select that. So when we select a recipe, what do we want to happen? Well, the first thing before we actually load that recipe, what I need to do is I need to determine what was selected and what row. So based on the search, right, I need to know, again, I need to extract this four. Why is that important? Or I need to extract this five. Why is that important? Because it's that four or that five that's going to let us know what was selected. That four or that five is going to come from here, in this case four, in this case five, or it's going to come from here, in this case four or five. And it really depends on what type of filter we have set. So for example, if the ingredients, it says ingredient and this has a specific ingredient listed, it's not blank, then I know we've searched by ingredient. However, if we search by whether it's category or like clicking here, or whether we've searched by uh, recipe name here, either one of those are going to be based on this list, which is our recipe database, not our ingredient database. Okay, so we need to differentiate between those two. So to do that, we just check here. So first of all, we get the result row, I need to extract that result row, that result row is going to come here three, or in this case, four right here. So all I need to do is remove the text recipe and M. So to do that, we just do it here. So replace based on the application caller, the shape name that called it, taking recipe and M and replacing it with nothing. That's going to extract the result row. Once it's there, well, again, what I want to do is I want to color that shape. How do I know what shape has been colored? Well, I've got the name now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the other recipe names and I'm going to color them that transparency color. I could probably make this two rows, you know, so it's larger. So what I want to do is I want to make maybe and you can maybe make it a little bit wider here, but that's fine for our purposes. So what I want to do is I want to color all the existing names transparent, basically that 50% transparent, then I want to determine which one was selected and color that white so that I know which one selected. So the first step we want to do is color all of them that 50% transparency so we do that with a loop for each recipe shape in the shapes right for anything that contains the word recipe name then I want to fill the transparency of that 50% giving that 50% transparency then what I want to do is I want to recolor the one that we've selected the recipe name and the result row that's the one we colored we could also use application color with this that would be sufficient as well fill dot transparency equals zero giving it that full color full color no transparency full color and this is 50 so that's the selected we'll call this the selected recipe so great so we have that now what I want to do is I want to determine which type of search was set if D2 equals ingredient and E2 does not equal empty, then I know it's been an ingredient search was done. Then what I want to do is set B2. B2 is very important. B2 is going to take that recipe ID. Very important. Once I put B, that recipe ID, but how do I know where that recipe is coming from? That recipe ID is going to either come from here based on a recipe database or it's going to come from our ingredient here. But we need to know using that if statement right here. If it's an ingredient and there's an ingredient, then we need to come from the ingredient row. Then the recipe ID, B2, is going to contain the recipe ingredient database, the one we're looking at above, and Q and the result row. Remember, that result row comes from here, right? We've already extracted it, right? However, if it's a recipe search, right, if it's based on whether we've selected here, chicken, or whether we've based it on here, chicken, right? In either one of those cases, those results are going to come directly from the recipe database here. So in this case, it's going to be S and the result row, S and the result row. So in that case, B2 is going to equal the recipe database S and the result row that's going to set. So either one of those were setting the recipe ID. Once I have placed that recipe ID directly in here, 
what that's going to do is going to return the result, the row, the recipe row. And that recipe row is going to be based on a formula. And that formula is going to be basically we're matching whatever's in B2. We're going to get the recipe ID and we want an exact match and we want to add three. Why is that? Because that recipe, those recipe database start in row four. So if it returns one, meaning the first value, I want to, I want the row. So we're going to extract that it means it's the row. So recipe ID one is going to be on row four. So that's exactly what I want. So that, so for recipe ID one is going to be on row four. It is that four that I want. Because then we're going to run the macro that's actually going to load that recipe. And that macro is here. So when I click the definition, it's going to switch to our recipe macros here inside our module called recipe macro. And the one we're going to focus on right now is called recipe load. That is the macro that's going to run that. So basically with that macro, all I need to do is bring in all of this information here, bring it directly inside this heading information right here. Okay, so to do that, we're going to use data mapping. Now, if you haven't seen this before, basically what I want to do is I want to map butter chicken is a recipe name. I want to map that to K3. Notice this is K3. I want to map that category, in this case, O3, to the O3. And that makes it a lot much quicker to load in. So all we need to do is run a loop. We already have our ID. It's already in B2, so we don't need to start our ID. Our loop is going to start on column two and go all the way to 12. What we're going to do is we're going to basically take all this information. We have our row. Our row is located right here inside B3. We have that row. And we're just going to load everything in according to that. So it's going to, so this is the, the pictures are going to go in B7, B8, B9, and B10. Notice the pictures are coming in B7, B8, B9, and B10. Okay, so we're going to bring all them. Those are off the screen. Columns A and B, of course, will be hidden. Okay, so we're going to bring that in there. And also we have that. So all we need is that row. That's important. We're going to run a loop and then bring in all that information in. Then the second part of it, right, the second part, we're going to load in those ingredients. And then the third part is we're going to load in all of those steps along with the pictures associated with those steps. So we can do that in just three parts. So let's take a look at the recipe load. First thing I want to do is I want to clear any star ratings. Why don't clear everything else? If there's some ratings here, we're going to go over how we did that in just a moment. But I want to make sure that we're clearing all of those out. So how do we do that? Well, these ratings have a shape. Notice there's a name. It's called three-star rating. This one here is called, a, let's say, five-star rating. So basically, they're all essentially the same here, but except for the number that's preceding, five-star rating. So anything, right, I want to clear anything that says star rating, I want to clear out. So doing that here. So if the in string, run, running a loop with all the shapes inside the sheet, once again, that, but this time we're focused on anything that contains star rating. If it's greater than zero, in this case, we're not deleting it. Keep that in mind. I don't want to delete it. I, only, I want to reuse them again and again. So all I want to do is make them invisible. I want to hide them using dot visible equals MSO false. Once I've done that, what I want to do is I want to clear out all of the associated fields before I load in the new recipe. So we're going to load in all, clear out all these fields. And that includes B5, right? B5 is located our selected picture. And it's going to keep track of what picture we're located on. It's going to keep track of, all, of course, all the pictures. I want to clear out all the ingredients and all the steps and everything like that. So we're going to clear out a bunch of fields here. Okay, next up, what I want to do is I want to make sure B3 is empty. B3 is critical. We need to have that recipe row. If that's empty for any reason, we need to let the user know to select a specific proper recipe. In that case, if B3 is empty, please select a correct recipe display and exit the sub. Okay, so once we do have that, assuming we do have it, we're going to put that into a variable called recipe row, REC row. And then all, again, all I want to do is then load everything else in. And we can do that through a loop because we have data mapping. For the recipe column is equal 2 to 12. So basically, all it's going to do is go from column 2 in our side, our recipe database, all the way to 12, which is this column, column L, and then bringing anything over in that row into the associated cell. So we can do that with just this line of code. Dot range recipe database right cells row one recipe column this is the range this right here is the range that's b8 b9 b10 whatever so inside that we're going to place whatever is located in the recipe database the recipe row the recipe column we're going to load that recipe data and just run through that loop three lines of code to load all that data 
Okay, now what I want to do is I want to set that star rating. If you notice here, that star rating, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, well, those are numbers. How do we convert those numbers to this shape, right? So if we, if let's say I reset that to three star rating and I save that, when I reload that butter chicken, save recipe, although that looks really good. I really can't imagine that's a three star. And let's just go to another recipe and then we'll go back to the butter chicken, right? I want to make sure that that three star got saved and it's displayed. So what I want to do is I want to convert that. Now, remember, if we look in our shapes here and we take a look at down inside our, our shapes here, we've got several. Well, let's find it first here. Selecting it on that, and we can see which one's selected. So I've got star rating, two star rating, I've got a three star rating, a four star rating, a five star rating, and of course a one star rating. So here. So I've got all those into individual shapes, right? They're all hidden except for the one I want. I what I basically want to do is I want to display the rating that's associated with that number. So if they've got a two star or a three star rating, I want to like butter chicken has a three star rating, I want to display that three star rating and I want to display it. So how are we going to convert it? Well, we do that with this. We know, right, if we take a look inside B6, let's take a look inside a recipe database. If we look at that, it's going to go directly into B6. So we're going to take a look inside B6, and we see B6 is a 3. So now if I know I want to display, everything's been hidden. Remember, we hid all the star ratings. We hid that inside our code. We did that up here. We hid them all, so they're all hidden. But which one do I want to display? Well, all I have to do is combine this three with the text star rating, and I know which one to display. So if B6 value does not equal empty, and to make sure it's a number, B6 is true, meaning it is a number and it's not empty, then shapes B6, This in this case it would be the three, with the word star rating, combine that is our shape name. So when I make that visible equals true, that's going to make it visible. Okay. I'm also going to show you how we did this really cool drop down list. I hope you'll, I won't forget. <laughs> and I won't. So that's all we need to do is simply show that star rating based on the number, right? So if this changes to five or whatever, if I change that to five, right, and I save it here, saving our work, and I load that again, it is that five that's going to be replaced. And now we're showing that five star rating, which is probably a good recipe. So now what I want to do is we're ready to fall in the picture. So we've done everything, we've loaded all our information we set our star rating but now what I want to do is I want to set this picture how do we set this picture up well first of all this is based on a frame all I have here is a simple frame right this is just a simple square box right all it is is just a simple square shape nothing more than that and I've taken it I've given it a brown border and we're gonna fill it with a picture okay so in this case I've given this a name this particular box is called pick frame so what I want to do is I want to see do we have a, a picture in here. If we do, then I want to take that picture. I want to combine that picture with our recipe pictures folder here. So our folder combined with the picture name. And then what I want to do is I want to combine it and then I want to fill that square, filling that square or rectangle in this case with that picture. So that's how we're going to do it inside here. So set picture one or the default picture. But if it's not there, if we don't have one, we do have to have a default picture. Notice I've got a default picture here when I clear it, right? So I want to make sure that if there is no picture here, I want to set it to the default picture. So if I, I didn't save that change, so it's going to automatically load up. If I were to save that change, it would have cleared out that picture. So if B7 value equals empty, there's no first picture, right? Our first picture is going to go into B7 right here. Remember, B7 is that field that's been mapped automatically to that first picture in column I. So if there's no picture, then we want to load that default picture. Where is that default picture located? It's located right here in the admin inside C6. So that is our default picture. So what we're going to do is determine if B7 is empty, then I want to fill this box with the default picture. Otherwise, I want to load in that picture. So if B7 equals empty, then the picture file name is equal to admin C6. That's our default picture, right? Setting that default picture. Else we do have a picture. The picture file name is based on the admin C4. Of course, that is our ad default folder for our pictures located here in C4, our default recipe picture. We combine that with what's located inside B7 along with the backslash, and we have our first picture. This is the full file name. Then what I want to do is I want to set B5 to 1, right? Now, because I'm going to have several pictures here that I'm going to loop, I need to keep track of what picture I'm on. B5 is going to help us with that. B5, if we take a look in B5, 
we see if I select previous, notice that B5 changes. As I loop through these pictures, take a look at B5. It's changing, right? So B5 is going to keep track of what picture we're on. Then so that we're going to set that initially to 1. Set the selected picture to 1. As we run the macro, which I'll show you in a bit, at looping through, basically looping through those pictures, or as it looks like, it's just a simple slideshow, we, can, we need to keep track of one. So we're going to set that to one. Okay, so that's it. So that's what we do. All we're doing with that is basically setting this string variable to whatever picture we want to display. Now it's easy. We can display with one line of code. But I want to need to make sure that it is an accurate file name. So if there's any issue, it would come up here. If the directory picture file name does not equal empty, then we can load it in. Then we know it's an accurate picture. Shapes, the picture frame, that frame that I showed you, filling that picture frame with the user picture based on that picture file name. Now, that picture file name is either the default or the existing picture. That's it. That's all we have to do. Next up, we have a specific macro that's going to load the ingredients and another macro that's going to load the steps. So let's go over those macros right now. So let's take a look at that first macro, loading the ingredients. That's a macro right here. The first thing of what I want to do is I want to make sure that we're clearing all the ingredients. Now, we do notice when we select a row, we've got conditional formatting. That's going to be in B1. B1 is going to take our selected ingredient row. So I want to make sure we clear that out. I also want to clear out any existing ingredients that might be there, although they shouldn't. So we're going to clear those out. But they're important because we're going to run this macro. When we remove an ingredient, we're going to refresh this macro again. So not the whole. So I want to clear again. I want to clear out everything from G12 all the way through I and down. And I also want to know the database row. There's a database row that's going to keep track. Now that database row is all the way over here into column Y. That's the ingredient row. That is the database row. Notice we have ingredients. That's the database row, whether it's three, four, five, right? I got to keep track of that too, because if we make changes to that row, I have to have that updated. So to do that, we need to keep track of it, but we can keep track of it way off the screen here. So we need to declare also a column Y. So we do that through this here. So the first thing we want to do is load the ingredients. B1 gets cleared out the select row, G12 through I99, all the ingredients, and our database row located in column Y. So we're clearing all the existing ingredients and the data associated clearing that out. So now we're going to focus primarily for the most part on the ingredients database. Again, I need to run that advanced filter and I need to base it directly on this receipt. I need to know all the ingredients for that recipe. So to do that, we need to know what's in B2. So inside our ingredients, we have here a criteria located in I3, and that's linked directly to B2 in the recipe. So we have our criteria always set up. So all we need to do is get to the last row, run an advanced filter only based on here, I2 and I3, having those results come into here. So those results are going to come directly inside K3. So we're going to do that inside an advanced filter. So if the last row is less than three, we're exiting out. We're going to run our advanced filter a2 through column F. We're going to have the criteria again in between I2 and I3, and those results coming from K2 through O2, unique goes true. Then we're going to determine the last results row, right? We need to know the last row. In this case, it's 19, but I need to make sure that we have that, and that's going to be based on column M, and that's going to be our row, M or, or because there may not be a quantity, I want to make sure that we have that ingredient row. So our last results row, if it's less than three, that means we have no ingredients. We're going to go skip all this and go directly to here. Assuming that we do have, I want to run a loop. We're going to run that loop here if we do have ingredients. So for the result row equals three to the last result, we're basically running a loop. I'm going to place this information inside our row, and we also need to set our initial row here. So we want to make sure, but what is that row? Where are we going to place it? I'm going to be placing it in row 12, row 13. This is our ingredient row. This is the row that's associated here, 12, 13, 14. So I need to know what row to place it in. So what we'll do is we're going to get that row, that ingredient row, directly from here inside column N and put that into a variable. Once I know that row, I can place this information here, and I also place the row in column Y. So this goes into the recipe, this goes in column Y. But I'm extracting that ingredient row from column N. So that's what we do here. The ingredient row is equal to N in the result row. This is called the ingredient row. Ingredient row. So once we have that on the recipes, we can then place it. So the recipes G through I equals K through M. Here, G through I equals K 
K through M, bring it over. The last thing, I just need to put that row, and that's going to go directly in Y. That's going to go right here, okay? So we bring that in with just that second line right here. So recipes Y in the ingredient row equals whatever is in O in the database row. That's going to be it. That's all we need to do to bring our ingredients in. That's it. Now what about the steps? The steps is also really cool, but I'm using shapes in the step. And the reason I'm using shapes is because I want the picture to show up exactly, right? If I have a picture that's associated with the step. So I decided to use shapes as opposed to cells. It kind of gives it a nice look too. And I could do that. So what I'm doing as opposed to, I could have done a dynamic shape where the shape could grow or shrink as the text do. But I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to put a picture and I wanted to have that picture exactly. So what I did is I decided to have a fixed height for our shapes. That way the picture associated with that also has a fixed height. It's got a nice look, okay? So it should cover it. You can increase or decrease your height as you see fit based on the text inside your steps. But basically these are all the steps that are involved to create that recipe. So I put those into a shape. And just like with our other shapes, I've also done the same thing. I've created a sample shape. So you get to see the repetition doing it over and over and over again. And you can be able to create these very, very quickly. So step sample shape. I created this application in about two days. So step sample text right here is our text here. That's the step that's going to be here. Then we have our number. That's called step sample number. So it is these that we're going to duplicate for every step associated. So again, what I need to do is I need to determine all of the steps that are associated with this, with this particular recipe. So to do that, again, we're running it in an advanced filter. This is our steps database. Our, again, our criteria is based directly on the receipt ID located in B2. We're going to run that advanced filter. Then again, I need to do that, but I need to do one extra step, right? In this case, what I want to do is I want to make sure we don't need it that long, our column. And so we can reduce the column width here a little bit. We don't need it at 242. I think 50 is sufficient here. Okay, so what we want to do is I want to then make sure that they're sorted according to the step number in ascending, right? Because if we add a step or we change a step, right, we may not want to add them in, in way. But I do need to make sure that they are sorted accordingly, step one through step six. Then I'm going to loop through these starting here, going here, creating shapes for each one of those, creating that number shape, placing that number, creating that uh, shape that's going to be storing our instructions, then adding the picture if it exists, and then associating the row. Now, I need to know the row, and I need to know the picture. I need to have that information here. But I don't really want to see the row, and I don't really want to see the picture name. So what I've decided to do is store those. And I'm going to store them right here. Notice for every shape, these shapes are kind of in the way, but if we move these out a little bit here, we can see that we've stored those individual information here so the butter chicken here so each one of these rows corresponding this is the picture if we see that this is the picture associated with the step this is the database associated and i'm skipping look i'm skipping four four rows here and going so every fourth row i'm going to add another one that gives sufficient space and so what i want to do is when i select on it i want to know i want to be able to load in that step so that i can make changes so if i right click on here right click on the shape and i see it's called it's called recipe step text 15 15 notice that 15 is associated with this row again so if i extract this one's called recipe 19 so if i remove when the select the shape if i remove this it's going to leave me with 19. if i know that it's 19 then i know the picture and i know the database row and i can load all the information in here okay so when we load the steps all i want to do is basically start out on 15 skip step four and load in each one of the pictures in the database row and then load in the text. So we need all that information. Again, I need the number, I need the text, I need the picture, and I need the database row. All of that's coming from here, the step, the instructions, the picture, and the database row. So that's what we're gonna do as we loop through the steps. Just like we did before, when we create new steps, I wanna make sure that any pre-existing steps have been removed. So if we take a look at these, this is called re the receipt step text here. This is called receipt step picture. 
This is called receipt step number. So notice that every one starts with receipt step, excuse me, <laughs> recipe step, REC step. So each one of those, so if all three of those things have that same in common, if I want to remove everything associated, every shape that's associated with a recipe step, I can use those first same characters to remove them all, and then we can do, or we can do them individually like I've done here. We could d easily do recipe step in a single line, but I wanted to do it just in case we enable them, but you could do a single one with recipe steps. But in here, recipe number, delete if it clears, recipe text or recipe step picture. All of those are deleted. Now they could be done in just a single line, but I may have some other ones that call it this. So I wanted to make sure to be very specific here. On air resume next is important in case there's an issue with one of those shapes. When we remove one, it could create a problem. So it would create a bug, but this takes care of it for us. So basically we're removing all the shapes, all those numbers, all those text, all those pictures associated before we add the new ones. And then what I want to do is I want to clear any selected recipes, B11 and B12. When I select a recipe, we need to store some information and that's going to be here in B11. I need to know the step that was loaded. Notice that we click on step four, step three, and I also need to know the row that's associated. So for example, if I click on here, this is 19. So I want to know 19. And then of course, I want to know the next step. We'll get into that in just a moment when we add steps. So we understand that, that we're clearing out and we're clearing out any selected recipes, right? When I load it, I want to make sure that we're clearing out all this information here. So we don't need that B11 to 12 clearing those contents. Okay, now we're focusing primarily on the recipe steps database. So we're going to click the step row is the initial step. Row. Remember, I need to know as we add steps here, we need to set that initial row. The first step is going to be on row 15. The second step is going to be on 19. And then of course, on 23 and so on and so forth. We're stepping four. So setting that initial row here to 15. Now we're going to get the last row. I need to know the last row, right? When we loop through all the steps, of course, just like with any other advanced filter, we need to get the last row before we run. In this case, it's 105. So uh, my great assistant Shane took a lot of this and took on this data. So thank you very much for taking care of all this incredible data. So we've got to, we're going to run our criteria here, running, and of course we are going to have our results come into here. So we're going to do that with an advanced filter, but we want to make sure that we've got data. If the last row is less than three, then we can exit the sub out. We're going to turn off application screen updating. Going to put that to false. That's going to make things a lot quicker. As long as we set it back to true before the macro ends here, we are good to go. Okay, which we did. All right, so assuming that we've done that off, now what we want to do is get ready to run our advanced filter. And we're going to do A2 through E, all the way through E. We're going to set that criteria from G2 through G3. And of course, we now want those results coming in from I2 through L. All the results are going to come all the way in I2 through L. Once we have those results, I need to determine the last row and make sure that we have last row. So the last results row are going to be based on column I. And then if it's going to be three, that means we have no steps. We can skip all the way down to here, no steps, because there is no data. Assuming that we have data, we can then set our loop. Right? I want to know a loop. But before we do that, before we loop again, as I mentioned, we need to sort that data. I want to make sure that it's in the order of those steps. To do that, we're going to set with the sort. We're going to clear any existing sorts. We're going to add a key based on I3. I3 is our first row in the data. I want it ascending, right, the lowest to the highest, and a sort on normal. We're going to set the range here. It's going to be based, again, we have to, again, we have, because we're inside the sort, we, again, have to call out the sheet, call out the sheet. Sometimes I used to forget to do that. A lot of times it wouldn't work, right, because we're in the sheet here, but, again, we're inside another width. So, again, we have to call out that sheet. And then based on the data, I3 through L in the last results row, that's going to make sure we get the range and then apply that sort. So that's going to run the sort to make sure that those steps are in the correct order. Once we do that, we're ready to run our loop, right? I'm going to loop through every single result starting in row three, going to the last result. We're going to set that step number into a variable, a long variable, based on what's located in I in the result row. I also want the instruction text inside a string variable called instruction. It's going to be located in J. And I want to put that picture, remember that picture file name, where's that going to go? Inside recipes, it's going to go in column A, and K. It's going to go based on whatever this, remember, we set that row up here. Where's that row going to be? It's going to be based on that step row. So A and the step rows, where it's going to be placed. So right here, we're going to do that right here. 
A in the step row, that means it's going to put that picture directly inside A. So that picture is going to go right here. And it's first A15, then A19. And the last thing, I also want to put that database, and I want to put that inside B. So that's the second thing we're going to do. But before we do that, I want to set the picture file name. That picture file name for those steps, again, we've got our location for our step pictures located right here inside C5. So I want to combine C5 along with the backslash here, C5 along with the backslash, along with the result row, whatever's in K. Right? Here's our K. Here's our picture. I want to combine that, right? So we have the full file path for that step picture. And then we have the step database row. Remember, that's going to come from L. I want to place that step database row in column B. Remember, we've got the picture in column A. We've got the step database row in column B. Now what I'm ready to do is I'm ready to create that step. right? I wanted to create this step. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to duplicate this shape right here called step sample text, duplicating that just as we did the other ways. So we can do that here, step sample text, duplicating that and giving it a name. I want a specific name based on the receipt step text and the step row. Remember, I want that row. That row is going to be 15, 19, 23. So that's how 15 here, 19, 23, those names are going to show up. So that's how I know that net, that step row, naming those shapes, very, very important because when we click on them, we know exactly how the row, the, the information was like. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create the text, right? I'm going to create this shape here. I want to set the width basically to all the way from columns K through P. I want to set the width of that, same width of P, and that's it. So then I want to set the top position. So we can do that from here. The left position is going to be based on K and the step row. The top position is also going to be K and step row, but I'm just going to go a little bit below that. So I'm going to add two to that. So it drops it down a little bit. Again, we're setting the entire width basically from K through P. That's the entire width. K through, in this case, O. So it should be, um, let's see, P. Yeah, P. So it should be P. I'll just update the text on that. Should be P, column P. So we're good to go that. And then what I want to do is I want to set the text, right? What's the text? The text is going to be based on that variable instructions text. We've already put it into a variable. So the text frame, text range text is equal to instructions. Set the instruction text. Now, remember, when I clicked on it, I want to, I want to add a macro to that. We haven't gotten to that macro yet. But the name of that macro is called step load. So I'm going to assign that macro called on action to step load. Great. So we've added this text shape, but we haven't added the number yet and we haven't added the picture. So we're going to do that right now. So we're going to add in the step number shape. Again, we have a sample right here, here called sa step sample number. And it is that number that we are going to duplicate. And we're going to give it a specific name, the recipe step number, and then the step row. Even that has one. We didn't assign, I didn't assign a macro to this, but that's fine. You could, but I didn't. So um, in this case, we're going to set that up. We're going to focus on that. With that number, we're going to place the left position based on K minus five, right? I want that moved a little bit over to the left, not directly on K. And I'll also want the top position, not directly, but a little bit less than the K in the top row. So it's going to be minus one, setting that top position. And of course, I want to set the number, the text frame. There's going to be that step number, right? So that's going to give it that unique number. Great. So we've added the step. We've added the direction text. Lastly, all we need to do is add the picture, if any. So first of all, we've put that picture, right? We've already defined that full file path of the picture right here in picture pound out. So now all we need to do is check to make sure it's accurate. If it is, then we can add it. If it's not, then we don't. So first, we're going to check. If the directory picture file name does not equal empty, then we know it is a correct picture, and we can start adding. Recipe pictures, we're going to insert the picture file name. Here, we're taking the sheet, again, pictures, insert, we're inserting this picture file name, and we're giving it a specific name. It's going to be called the recipe step picture and then the row. Once we have that, we can then work with it. Again, I'm going to lock, in this case, normally I lock the aspect ratio true, but in this case, I really want to, I want them all exactly the same. I want that nice look and feel. So I don't want to lock the aspect ratio in this case. In this case, I want to contort it a little bit. And so we're going to make sure that this is false, right? We do want to change the aspect ratio. I'm going to set the left position to column Q, right? Based directly on column Q. I'm going to set the width directly based on column, the width is going to be 70. I could base the width directly on column Q too. That's fine too. That would work just as fine. So I want the top position to be Q and the top plus two, right? It's going to set that top position right at the top position there. Now what we do is we're going to set the height. I want the height of that exactly to the height of whatever this is. Whatever this is, the recipe step text, I want the exact same height as that. So 
the recipe text and the step row height. That sets the height the same as the text box. That's all we have to do. And then all we need to do is increment the step row is going to equal the step row plus 4. Remember, we're starting at 15 and we're moving to 19 then 23. So we need to increment. And we're going to do that for every single step inside for that recipe. Then application screen up to in true. That is all you have to do to load the steps. Okay, very cool. Let's move on. Next up, I showed you briefly this really cool picture slider to be able to rotate between four different pictures. And let's get to that macro now. And basically it's gonna be rotating between these four pictures, between B7, B8, B9, and B10. And of course, we also want to keep track of the picture number located in B5. Okay, now we know if we combine this picture uh, along with the folder located here inside C4 in the admin, we can get a full file path. Okay, knowing that, what we've done is we've assigned macros. Now, I've assigned a macro to this. If we take a look at that, we see it's the recipe picture previous, and the one, other one is basically next. So let's take a look inside that. First, we're going to start out with the next one. So that's the, basically the one that has been assigned to this right shape right here. So when the user clicks it, they're going to move to the right. So, for example, if they are on currently, we are on picture number three located here, this picture number three. I want to move when I click here once, I want to move to picture number four. So this is four and this is the one that's displaying. So how are we going to do that? Well, we do that with just a little bit of code, not too much. First of all, with focusing on the recipes, we've got a string variable called recipe picture folder that's located in C4. Then we're going to add the backslash onto that. We want to make sure that that is a correct folder, that, that it does can exist in the computer. If it doesn't, we're going to let the user know to know to select a correct recipe picture folder within the admin screen. Okay, and exiting the sub out. Then I want to know existing pictures. Remember in B5, we've got that picture number. I want to know what it currently is on. For example, if it's currently on four, we need to go back to one if we're going next. If it's currently on one, we need to move to three. So we're going to set that into a long variable called selected picture number. We're going to be looking at it. And that's the selected picture. Let's call that selected picture number. And if the selected picture is four, then I need to move to one. Remember, we only have four pictures. So if we're currently on the last one, I need to go back to one. I want this looping, right? I don't want it to stop. So I want it to continue on. So if it's the last one, we need to go to the first one, okay? So that's all we need to do is just let the user know. Else, right, if it's four, we need to go back to one. Else, the selected picture number is going to be the selected picture number plus one. For example, if we're on four, I just need to move it to two, right? So we have that. So once we have the right selected picture, that's going to be what the next one is. So if we're on one, it's going to go to two. If we're on four, it's going to go to one. Then what I want to do is I want to set the picture row. What row is that? Now, this picture is on row seven. This is on eight, nine, and ten, right? So if I'm on picture number one, what do I need to display? I need to display B, what's in B7. So it's B plus the picture number plus six. So I've put that inside a row here. The picture row is going to be the selected picture number plus six. That's the row because once I know that row, I can extract that picture file name and we can build the full file path. So the picture name is equal to B and whatever's in the picture row. That's the picture name. We can then build that file name. It's going to be the picture folder that we set in the variable that includes the backslash along with the picture name that sets the full file path. Next up, we do need to make sure that it is an accurate one. We can run that through the directory, VB directory, or if the picture name is empty for any reason, then we let the user know if it's empty or there's something wrong with it. What I'd like to do is I'd like to show that default picture. If we're on four and I make a change look here, that picture doesn't exist. This picture name doesn't exist. So if I'm on four and I switch to one, I don't I want to show something like the default picture. This picture I want to show. So if there's an issue with that, I want to show the default picture. So how do we do that? Well, we know we've got that default picture that's located directly here inside C6. So we just have to load that up. So if there's an issue here equals empty or the picture name is empty, then the picture file name is going to be the default picture located in C6. Then I'm just going to do a double check to make sure that even the default picture is accurate by running it through that. If it's empty or the picture name is empty, then the picture does not exist within the picture. Then just let the user know we don't have a default picture. We don't have any other picture, so we don't have anything to show. 
else otherwise if it is correct then what we're going to be doing else we're going to remember we're assigning this the default picture or we're assigning it the regular picture so either one it's in the same variable here now what we're going to do is we're going to show that with shapes picture frame that's that frame we're going to fill it the user picture putting in that picture and then we're going to set b5 to the selected picture we're going to set b5 to that updated remember so if it's if it's currently on one we want to advance it we're going to move it to two so we're going to click here and move it to two now it's set to two and we're showing the second picture okay great that's all we need to do for the next picture previous is almost exactly the same right we're going to check to make sure we have a correct folder we're going to select the picture number the only difference is in this one if the current one is one right if we're going previous and we're on this then what do we need to do we need to set it to four we need to set it to four because this time we're going previous so we're going back up it's going to go from four to three to two to one and if it's on one it's going to go to four so we're going to do just that inside the code if the selected picture number equals one then we're going to set it back to four otherwise it's the selected picture number minus whatever it currently is minus one reset on the first picture or subtract one the rest is very much the same exactly what we've done we're checking the picture row we're setting that up to get that picture name we're, we're going to make sure it's if it's empty or b2 empty then what i want to do oh here's a here's a brand new line for this one it's kind of important here and then what i want to just on this one this is important if we're moving back up right if we're moving back up i want to make sure that we're going to go back up for example if we cleared out if i clear out a picture let's say we clear this picture out here right and i'll go over that macro now look we can't go back right i want to know the next available row with a value right i don't want it to create an error so how do we do that well what i'm going to do in this case is i want to make sure that we know the last picture row if b in the picture row equals empty right if there's a blank spot here then i want to find the next available row with the value so the picture row equals b10 and xlep set to the first picture name i want to know the first one available all right so the picture name is going to be equal to b right the pro picture profile same as the folder in the picture name we're going to check to make sure it exists if not we're going to set it to that default picture if that default picture is inaccurate we're going to let the user know otherwise we're going to set that user picture to the picture file name again building out that frame filling it with the user picture remember it is no different no different than just simply right clicking on here again formatting that picture going into the fill and then just choosing a file it is the same exact thing right there's no there's no difference when we have that so if we were to do that a recipe picture it's exactly the same as just doing this and inserting that picture so no different than that except we're doing it through vba okay and we can do the same thing through add picture and that's the one i'm going to go over with you next so that's all we need to do for our previous picture and our next picture but what if we want to add a picture right what if i have a brand new one or i want to replace the picture maybe i don't like this maybe picture number two doesn't exist and I want to add a picture so if we click on it we can just assign a picture like this and it'll assign it, although you wouldn't want a wood grain but you get the point point. and then what I want to do is I want to assign it to the first available cell so how are we going to do that well that's with add a picture so that's back in the recipes and if we take a look down here let's go under here I think it's the top of it here here we go save and after save add new recipe add picture right here recipe add a picture okay so with recipes again we're focused on we're going to make sure we need a folder for that right if i if i don't have a folder where we're going to put those pictures in we need to let the user know that please select a folder for all recipes okay we need to know what folder to put that in then what i want to do is i want to look for the first available space the first available where is that first available space right if they're all blank right if it's an add new right they're all blank on a brand new one right and we want to add a picture we know to add it on the first available one right we can put it anywhere here it's fine right so but i want to know that first available row so if i decide i want to add another one i've got it added this is going to be the second picture right in that case I want to put it in row two so i got to look for the first available row between b7 through b10 so we do that with this line of code we're going to set the found space we're looking for empty i'm looking for nothing and where are we looking we're looking between b6 and b10 and we're looking for values so if it's not found 
if found is nothing, means it's not found, it means they're all full, right? We need to let the user know if they're all full and we try to add a picture, for example, in this one, they're all full, we click add a picture, a maximum of four pictures can be added. Please clear a recipe before. Why would that happen? That means there's no blank spots between B7 and B10. How would we know that? Because if found, we're looking for a space in this range. I know it's B6, but this will work probably B7 to B10. B6 will be skipped and it'll be B7 to B10. A maximum of four pictures can be added. Please clear a recipe before adding a new picture, okay? All right, so picture row. If the picture row is the found, assuming it is found, we're going to set that where has it been found in the found picture row, right? If it's here, right, if I delete this, it's going to be found on row nine. So we're going to put it in adding that picture, right? We wanted to fill in whatever the first row is found. Now nine's done, right? So we're going to say the picture row is going to be below the first row in which it's found, found space dot row. The first available empty row, okay? That's where we're going to place it. If for some reason the picture row is six, just in case, remember I said between six and ten, right? But it's actually, if for some reason it's six, we're going to make it one. This just corrects any issues that could happen. If the picture row is six by any chance, then make it seven. Ensures the correct row. So we're going to set the recipe picture folder equal to admin C4. That's the folder. We're adding the backslash. That's the folder where it's going to be located. Right? I need to know that folder. User's going to browse for it. We don't know where they're on their computer they're going to look for it. But once they find it, once they pull that picture, what we want to do is we want to make a copy of that picture and put it in the correct folder so that it is available for the next time. So we can do that with application file dialog. And to do that, what we're going to be doing is we're going to set the recipe pictures application file dialog. Now, this variable recipe picture is already set as a file dialog here. The recipe picture as a file dialog. The same thing with a step picture and the same thing with a file dialog. So we've got all of those down there. So we'll be using them in the future. Okay, so uh, continuing on here with the add picture. So we're going to set that picture. Now we're going to give it a title, right? That pop-up, that's the title that comes up. And when you click here, you see this pop-up. Oh, we got to clear a space out before we add that in. Let's just let, or well, we can clear it. All we need to do is clear that picture and then add a picture here. Now the title here is called, please select a recipe picture. That's the title that's up here. And we want to make sure, notice down here in the lower right, it's got pictures, JPEG, PNG, GIF. We want to specify what kind of pictures they can add. So we do that with a filter. And that filter is added in right here. Picture files, JPG, PNG, GIF, one. Okay. We want to allow multi-select, no. We only want them to select one picture. If they cancel out of it, right, it's not, the dot show is going to be negative one. So if it's if they cancel out of it, it does not equal negative one. When they select something, it's going to be negative one. If they don't select anything, it's not going to be negative one. Then you need to go to no selection. It means they haven't selected anything. We need to skip everything else. But assuming that they have made a selection, we can continue on. What I want to do, as I mentioned before, is I want to copy the file from wherever the location is on their computer into the correct folder, which is going to be the recipe. So we do that with file copy. And we're going to file that selected items. This is the full file path of the picture that they've selected. And what I want to do, I want to place it. I want to copy it, make a copy of it. I want to place it in this folder along with the backslash and the directory of the selected items, meaning I want to extract only, I don't want the full file path. I don't want the, this is the full file path. I only want the file name. To extract that file name, we can wrap it in DIR. That's going to be just the file name. So when I combine the file name and the path, I get the full file path. So that, this is the original, when we're using file copy, this is the destination. This is where we copy it to. This copies the picture into the correct folder so that we can find it next time we want to display it. Then all we need to do is just place that picture name inside B in the picture. Right? I want to place that updated name directly in whatever here. So if we add a picture here, and I decided to add a picture, I want to place it directly in Inside that row. That picture name must get placed directly in B in whatever that row is. So that's what we do it here, placing it directly in there. So once it's in there, all we need to do at the end is simply add the picture to the frame. Using the picture frame, fill user picture, just as we said before, the folder, right, that we have it put it on, and the B in the picture, or basically the file name and the folder combined, right? And we're going to set that picture up. And then also what we need to do is just update B5 with whatever the selected picture number is. That selected picture number must go in B5. I want to know what picture we're on. And then, of course, 
we're going to, it's going to be simply the picture row minus six, right? So this is the selected picture number. That's sufficient enough, right? We could also add it to that. So we know the picture row, if the picture row is nine or whatever, so we're simply going to subtract it. Now it's how we get the picture number. Okay, great. So that's how, but what about clearing a picture, right? I want to clear a picture. How do we do that? We won't need any of this actually. So clearing a picture is relatively simple. All we need to do is locate that, clear the picture, and clear the name. So we can do that, that clear picture, that is the macro that's been assigned to this. So basically what I want to do is put the default picture in here if it exists, okay? Instead of clearing, and of course we need to clear out the associated row. If we know the picture number, it's three, and I know I want to clear out the row nine, all I need to do is add six to that. So that's what we're going to do inside the, the clear picture. So with recipes, if B5 does not equal empty, and range B and 6 dot value, what is this? Clear the contents. This is the picture. Remember, B5 to value, let's say this is 3. Let's say this, this is 6. So this would be B9, right? If we're trying to clear out picture number 3 plus 6, B9, we're going to clear out whatever the picture name is located directly in here, right? B9. 3 plus 6 equals 9, right? So that's how we clear that out. So assuming B5, then we're going to clear it out. Then what I want to do is I want to set the picture file name being that default picture. This is our default recipe picture. And we're going to put that directly inside a string here. Then I want to make sure that it is accurate. So we're going to use if director file name does not equal empty. If that means it is accurate, we do have a correct file path. Then what I want to do is fill that picture frame with that default picture right here. Then what I want to do is set the found, and then we, we don't need this. This is already done. I've already cleared out the row, so we don't need to do anything else. We're done. That's not necessary. All we need to do is clear the out and clear the picture. When we save that, remember when I go ahead and save this recipe, only when we save it, then do we actually put the space inside the picture, right? So if I were to save it, it's going to then put this blank spot directly inside here. If we don't save it, then, then no changes, right? So I can, if I don't save it, then all the pictures are going to come back because I didn't save it. Okay, great. So that's how we clear the picture. Very, very good. All right, let's continue on. So we've got recipe load. We've got ingredients and steps load. We know how to add a picture. We know how to clear the picture. How do we save a recipe? How do we add new? And how do we delete? So we're going to cover those, then email and print. And I think we're done, but we'll do a double check. Okay, so let's do on the save recipe. When I save this recipe, what do I want to do? Well, basically what I want to do is I want to determine is it a new recipe or not, right? How do I know if it's a new recipe? If B4 is not blank, that it is an existing recipe. If I click add new, we know that, excuse me, B3, it's not, not, not B4, B3 is our row, right? B3 is our row associated with the recipe. So if this is blank, we know it's new. If it's an existing, B3 is always going to have a value. So B3 is our differentiator. So that is the macro that's been assigned to this save recipe button. So when we go inside here, and we go up here to, I believe it's here, recipe save. Okay, that's the one we're going to focus on now. Okay, with the recipes, again, I want to make sure that we have some required fields. We need to make sure that we're saving it. We need to have a recipe name and I need to have a category. I'm going to make sure that both K3 and O3 are required. So we're going to do that to make sure that we have at least those before saving. If K3 is equal to empty or O3 is equal to empty, then we need to let the user know to please make sure recipes contain both a name and a category. And we're going to exit the sub. Those are required. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to determine, again, is it a new recipe or is it an existing? B3 is going to let us know. If B3 is empty, it's a new recipe. Else, it's an existing recipe. So we need to do three things if it's a new. First, what I want to do is determine what row we're going to place that recipe on. I need to know the first available row. So we can use end XL up. That first available row is going to be 24. I also, for the second thing I need to do, is I need to determine what is the next recipe ID. We're going to use it here. It's going to be located in B4. We're using the max formula to determine that the recipe ID, which is all of the name ranges, make sure for recipe, make sure that your recipe IDs are all numbers to use the max, and then we're going to add one to it. That's going to get us our next available. So what I need to do is I need to take this and I need to place it directly inside B2. I also need to take this and apply it or it's called A right here. So, and also, no, that's it. That's all I need to do for the new, just those three things. So we're going to do that here. First, determine the recurring row, it's going to be the recipe row. It's going to be based on the recipe database. A and XLUP, the first available row, plus one. That is our first available row. 
right? And then also, again, like I mentioned, in B2, we're going to take whatever's in B4 and place it. B4 is our next recipe ID, okay? We're going to place it directly inside B2. And then lastly, we're going to place it directly inside A and the recipe row. Recipe database A and the recipe row equals B4. It's the next recipe ID. So that's it. Those are the three things we need to do if it's new. If it's existing, all we need to do is extract the recipe from the uh, B3 inside a variable recipe row. So the recipe row is equal in B3 or it's a new one. Everything else, everything else, which is these three rows, is exactly the same whether it is for a new or an existing recipe. So again, we're going to run that loop just as we did when we loaded that recipe, except this time it's going to be in reverse. This time the recipe database is going to take and get that information and it's going to be based on whatever's located in the recipe row and the recipe column. So we're looping through, basically taking all of the data, whatever's located in inside here, 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 and here, and here, and placing it directly in whatever row based on this. In K3, we're going to place it here. Whatever's in O3, we're going to place it here, and so on and so forth. Running a loop from 2 to 12. We don't need to start in 1 because we've already placed 1. We've already placed that ID there, so we only need to run it from loop. Okay, so that's it. That's all we need to save the data. Next up, I want to save the ingredients, right? Now, keep in mind that we need to save all these ingredients. Now, we need to know, are these ingredients saved or not, right? So the best way to do it is look all the way over here. I'm going to bring that over. We don't need it that far over, do we now? So bring it over. So we have our ingredients. So what I need to know is, does the ingredients already have a row or not? For example, if I decide I want to add an ingredient here, so I want to add some ingredient here, quarter drop of, let's say, beef juice, okay? So if I want to add a quarter drop of beef juice, I know that I, this has not been saved to the database yet, right? So if I know that there's no row associated with this, notice, look at row 29, there's no row. I would need to save this as a new row inside here, our ingredient database here, that would need to be saved right here. So when I save it, right, I need to check for a new database row. I would put it down here in row 230 if it has not been saved yet. So we're going to do that. So basically what I need to do is determine the last row based on the ingredient name. Then we're going to loop through all the rows. And then if there's a database row associated with it, just make sure we save any changes that have been made. If there's no database row, then take what determine the first available row, put that row here, and also inside that row, I want to do this. I want to put the for that new one, just that new one, I want to put in the recipe ID. I want to put the row that it's associated, and I want to put a formula, the row here. That's going to come in handy a little bit later on. And we load that, okay? As you saw when we loaded it up, we needed that row. We needed to extract that row to place it. So all right, good. So we have that. So that's only for the new row. So let's get into the macro and take a look at that. Saving those ingredients. Again, just as I mentioned, we're going to determine the last ingredient row based on column I. That's going to be located here. Okay, so last ingredient row based on column I, the last ingredient row. If it's less than 12, that means there's no ingredients. We're going to skip all of this and go down to here, right? There's no ingredients. So assuming that there is ingredients, what we're going to do is we're going to run that loop ingredient row from 12 to last ingredient row. Again, we're going to check an I. Is I, if I is empty, we want to skip, right? If there's, if this has been cleared out or deleted, I want to skip. There's nothing I want to save here if it's empty, right? If this is empty, nothing to save. Okay, assuming it's not empty, we do have a ingredient. What I do is I want to check Y. Remember, Y holds our database. Why? Because it does. That's why. Okay, so it holds our database row. So if it's empty, then we have to know to add one. So that's what we need to check here. If Y in the ingredient row equals empty, it's a new ingredient. Then we need to do all these things for the new. For existing, it's just one thing. So for the new, again, I want to determine the first available ingredient row based on the ingredient database, A and up, getting our first available row. Adding in the recipe ID, very important, in column A in the ingredient. Then we're going to add inside, we're going to inside column E and column F, we're going to add in the ingredient recipe row and a formula. I need to know what row this is saved on, 29. So if I save this 29, that 29 is going to go right in column E. And then whatever column the formula is going to go in column F. So that's just what I do inside the formula. So E and F are going to take on that. And then also I need to update Y. Y also needs to take on the ingredient row, right? We need to make that update, right? So in this case, that new row would be put in here. So for example, if I save that recipe, and recipe save, you see that brand new row is here in row 230, beef juice got saved. So we look at the bottom of this, we see the last item is that beef juice. The recipe here, the recipe ID here, 
we have our, our quantity here, our unit of measure, our ingredient, plus we know it's been on ingredient row 29 and 230. I should, when we're doing these things, I should really freeze these columns. So it makes it a little bit easier for us when we go ahead and freeze these panes and freeze the top row. So now when we scroll, we can always see the, you know, we can always see the ingredient. So now we've just added all this information. So when we load it in again, it's going to come up. So that one hasn't been added. Okay, so that's just what we do here. And now in Y, we did add that row, that database row, knowing it's been saved. So that's what we do here in Y. Adding that. If it's an existing, it's very easy. All we need to do is extract the existing database row. Everything else is the same, regardless whether it is a new ingredient or an existing ingredient, we're going to update that database. And to do that, basically inside our ingredient database from B all the way through D is simply going to be equal to whatever is located in G through I. So we do that with this line of code, B through D of our ingredient database equals g through i of our recipe row there that's it so that's all we have to do and then we're just going to loop through that the recipe steps saved went now keep this in mind the recipe steps are saved when created or updated okay we want to make sure that the recipe steps so now those are for recipe steps i'm going to add that in so how do we save the recipe steps i'm putting that in here so recipe add new so how we saved Right, we say we know how we save the recipe, but and the ingredients. But how do we save the steps? So let's go ahead and go in that. That's separate. Okay. So recipe steps are automatic. In other words, as we add a recipe step, which we're going to get into, they automatically get saved. So we don't need to save them because as soon as we add it here, they're going to get saved to the database. For example, so let's say we've got let's say there's six steps. So let's call this step. Let's see, and then we're gonna go with that step seven, right? So we add a step seven. Maybe we want a picture associated with this step seven. We can just put in here any picture, okay? And now, as soon as we save this step, which is the macro we're gonna, that's gonna get here. So that gets saved automatically. So let's go over that macro. Now, how do we actually save that step? Okay, so let's go into the macro, okay? And then, or you can just see here, right click. If we right click, we're not sure what, it's a little bit faster. Assign the macro and just click edit. It's gonna set us right to the recipe macro. It's called save step. That's what I wanna go in with you now. So how to save that step with the recipes, of course, we wanna make sure that we have B3. What's in B3? I wanna make sure that if for some reason they try to save a step without first saving the recipe, let them know, right? If we try to add new, right? And I'm gonna, let's say, let's say test here and I save the step. I don't want them to be able to add steps without actually first saving the recipe. So I want them to say, please save the recipe first. So that's kind of important. We need to make sure that they do that. So B3, of course, that's located our row. If that's empty, we're gonna know that this recipe has not yet been saved. So to do that, just let the user know. Okay, assuming that the recipe has has been saved that's important i also want to make sure that they're not saving anything as soon you know if they try to save a step and there's nothing in k k11 let them know that they haven't actually added anything so if k11 equals empty please make sure to add some step directions before saving the step okay if b12 is empty it's a new step right now let's take a look inside b12 when we select something I want all the step information to go inside this. Remember, B12, right? It's gonna take that step row. If I click here, this is 15, this is 19. You know, it's based on the step. Remember, we're adding this. But if we click, if I, if I save that step, it's gonna be cleared out. So I know that there's nothing here, right? Notice B12, B11 are completely empty. So that means it's a brand new step. But if they're making a change and smooth, and thick right i need to know the difference if we're if we're saving it i need to know whether it is an existing or not right this right is an existing so i need to make sure that we update thick right so if i make a mistake like i always do save the step i want to easily be able to make that change very quick and easy so i have to differentiate is it a brand new one like it is here or is it an existing like it is in here b12 b11 is going to tell us that so here in b12 if b12 is empty it is a new step so when we set new step, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the step database row. It's gonna be the first available row on our steps database. And our steps database is located right here. It's gonna be a brand new step. Again, I'm gonna freeze this row here so we can just see it a little bit easier. View and then freeze. Okay, so we're gonna freeze that. So basically what I wanna do is the first available row. We got all these steps. I want to know the first available row. Notice that step seven I just saved there. What do I want? I want the ID of the recipe. I want to know the step number. I want to know the instructions. I want to know if there's a picture attached to it, and I want to know the row associated with it. So I want to know all that information. So as we move into the code, the step database row is going to be the first available one. The step row is going to be 
A99 plus 4. What is that, right? I want to know what that row is. Where are we going to place it, right? Let's see. If I've got all of these steps, I want to know the last row, in this case 39, we know they go every row, plus 4. So in this case, it's going to be 43 is our next one, right? So we've got 39. So next one, our next step is going to go on row 43. I know it's going to go. Remember, we're skipping four each time, right? We're, we're skipping three, so we're going to have each one three in between us, so it's every fourth row, right? So 43 here, and then, of course, 47, okay? So that's how we're going to do it. So I want to make sure that we're adding four to that right here, okay? Adding four. Finding the last row with a value in column A, and then adding four. It's going to be our next available recipe step row because we want our recipe we want it to go it very very easily that's how we can keep track of which one we're going on very easily because we're skipping they're they're basically equal step six so everything's on the same line it's very easy once we have that okay so we've got our step row our first available step row and our step database row we've got that now what i want to do is i want to add that information to the database i want to add the recipe id I want to add the next step number. It is in B13. How do I know what next step number is? Well, let's take a look into B13, right? If I'm counting everything, right, in B, let's say column B, how many steps? How many of there are values? How if I use count A, I want to know how many cells contain values, right? If I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if I've got seven here with values, I know if I add 7 plus 1, my next step is going to be 8. So that's what I've done here. Using count A formula, using B all the way to 75 or whatever, you could probably put this at nine, much higher value in case you've got a, a lot of steps, complicated cooking, plus 1, right? That's going to be our next step. So our next step's 8. So we know B13 contains our next step number. So we can put that inside. I'm going to take that and put that directly in B in the step row. I want to take it right here. I want to put that next step number. I want to put it right in here. So if we add that step 8, 1 is going to be the recipe ID. 8 is going to go here. Then I'm going to put the instructions. Then I'm going to put the picture. Okay, so that's it. So what else do we need to do? I also need to place for brand new ones. Remember, for new steps, I need to place that row, and I need to place it directly inside E, right? So that row, so I can keep track of it, it's going to go in with a formula. That way, if we delete something, it's still going to be here. Great, so we understand that. So that's going to go. So now also what I want to do is I want to place the picture name in A, and I want to place the database row inside B, just as we did for new ones. So here inside the recipe, I want to put that picture name in A, and I want to put a database row, and it's going to be based on here. So if we add one, of course, that's going to be placed directly in 43. So if I click Save Step here, and I put, let's say we're going to call this Step 8, right? Step 8, okay, so this is going to be Step 8, and maybe I want to put a picture in here. I want to add that information here, and I save that step. We know exactly where it's going to be placed, right? It's going to be placed directly in 43. A is going to take on the name. B is going to take on that database row. If we look in our step database, we see that. We've got our information here, the picture. Everything is in here. So let's continue on with the code. So that's all if it's new. If it's an existing, we're going to extract the step row from B12, right? That step row is going to be located in B12, and the step database is B in the step row. What do I mean by that? The step row would be 43, and the database row is going to be located in B and whatever the step row. In this case, 107. 107 is equal to this, the, one, the database row here. So we've got that all information. I need to know that database row because when we make changes, when we update that, we need to make sure that we're adding and up updating anything like that. So here we go. So the database row C, C is going to be our instructions text, right? That C here, right here, column C here is instructions. Whatever is inside our field cell here, K11 is going to take that on. So we do just that here, equals K11. And then that picture is going to go in column D, whatever is in L14. That picture file name is going to go right here. Okay, so we browse for that file name, and we're just going to go right here inside L. So we're going to save that picture file name. Okay, great, great. So what about if we delete a step? That's relatively easy. All we need to do is just simply determine if the step was saved or not, right? So if I add a step, test here, right, and I remove that step, all I need to do is just clear the rows, and it's going to be very, very simple. Let's clear that up. And I'll, I'll make sure to clear the contents K through O. We also need to clear that up. If step is saved else, right, oh, we got that in here. Let's put that in here. I want to do this, dot range. 
K here, making sure we clear all the information out. That's important too. K11 through O13. K11 through O13, right? Dot clear contents. And also, what else do we need to do? We need to clear that picture out, whatever picture's in here. That's going to be L14 through N14. So L14 through and 14 and we're going to clear the contents of that right so once i clear the contents then it can be cleared so what else do we need to do clear contents okay so continuing on we've got that there so but i first of all i want to make sure i want to make sure you want to remove this step give the user a point has it been removed yes or no okay then exit the sub or if they don't want to remove it there's nothing we can do so if let me just let me just uh, put this. I'm going to clear the contents regardless of it. This is if it's not been saved. I like it. That's better there. I'll keep it there. Okay. So are you sure you want to remove the step? Okay. Then we want to grab the step row. That's going to come from B12. We know B12 is going to take on that step row right here. Right. If it's been saved before, if it's not, nothing we can do. Okay. So the step database row that's going to come from B in the step row. And also what we want to do is just delete the entire row from our step database, right? When we, know, when we know the step database row, three or four, whatever it's located, let's say I want to delete this step, right? If I load step A, right, here, and it's loaded up here, now I want to delete that row. Remove the step. Are you sure you want to delete? Yes. So we want to do, we want to clear it out. It's no longer there. And if we look in our step database, it is no longer there. I've deleted the entire row. So that's all we do here, just delete the entire row. And I've cleared the contents now of the cells. And then what I do is I run the macro to load the steps so that it refreshes those steps. That macro, as we've been over, loads all those steps. So it reloads it and deletes everything. All right, very good. I'm glad we got that part to show you. Let's go over some adding new, which is a very quick macro, and of course, deleting it. We wanna go over those. So deleting the recipe and adding new. So we've got step delete. Ingredient delete, we're gonna go over in just a moment, but I want to go over the recipe delete. So the add new, which is going to be recipe, let's see, recipe add new. Okay, this one here with recipes, First of all, what I want to do is I want to clear the star ratings, right? If there's any any shapes, right? When we click add, we've got a lot of shapes. I have, I've got um, step numbers, I've got step text, I've got pictures, I've got rating pictures, and I want to show you um, the rating pictures here. I want to delete any rating pictures. So when we click add new, all of that must be cleared out, and we also want to set the default picture. So for each step shape, on air, resume next. For each shape, if it contains star rating greater than zero, I'm not deleting it. Remember, I don't want to delete those ratings. I just want to hide them, hide them. Everything else can be deleted, and that includes the recipe step number, the recipe step text, and the recipe step picture. So all those steps can be deleted. So this text, everything there can be deleted. So we can clear that out on add new. Okay, so what else? Then of course we need to clear all of the associated fields, right? I wanna clear all these fields. I wanna clear all the ingredients out. I wanna clear the database rows here. I wanna clear all the picture, you know, all of the step information. So everything needs to be cleared out using this line of code. Then what I want to do is I want to set the default picture. When I click add new, as you saw just a moment ago, that default picture appeared. So that's located in C6. And if it's a correct path, that what's in C6, then the shape fill, set that default picture to the picture file name. So that way, right, just as we've been over before, when I click add new, that default picture is going to show up and it's ready for an add picture. So all we need to do is just add a picture and it's done like that. And if we, of course, we go previous next, nothing's going to show up. So that's what I want. There's no previous picture. Okay, very good. So we got that shut up. You see that first picture showed up here. We're ready to go. All right, so that's it for add new. So recipe adding new. But what about if we want to delete it? Let's take a look at that. That is, of course, the macro that's been assigned to this here. And if we edit that, we can go directly to delete. First of all, I want to make sure the user wants to delete a recipe. Yes, no, or delete. Then I want to make sure that B3 is not empty, right? B3 means it's previously been saved before. It contains that database row. I'm going to put that database uh, recipe row located in B3. Now all of a sudden, all we're going to do is B3. Now this particular macro really isn't complete. I kind of ran out of time. Now it works just fine, but really when you're doing this, if you're doing this for a professional, you want to do the following, right? You want to run a Basically, you for, notice that we have all of these ingredients, right? What you want to do is you want to run a macro, an advanced filter, that's going to, based on this, and return all of the ingredients for that row. And you want to delete each one individually. You want to sort them. It's kind of, this is a large. You want to sort them by row, starting with the last one and deleting it. So you go delete row 230, delete 19, 18, 17. That is the correct way to do it. 
also in steps, you didn't do the same thing. You're going to run an advanced filter based on that ID, right? Whatever's in there. You're going to get your results here. You're going to start deleting it. You're going to sort them reverse, right, from lowest to highest, or you can go in reverse order. Then start with the last row, the, the highest number row, delete 106, then delete 8, 7, 6. So you want to go in that order. Keep in mind, if you delete row 3, that this will get deleted too. So we don't want that. So try not to delete row 3. Or you can just remove this criteria here and then just bring it up a row. So keep that in mind. It could be an issue if you delete row 3. So if I were preparing this, I would probably move this up one row so it never gets deleted. Keep those things in mind. That's that's really the proper way to delete. We're doing an easy, kind of a quick easy to delete, so that's an easy way. And then all we're going to do is we're going to run the macro that adds new. So when I delete it, it's going to do that. It's just going to clear it up and add new. Okay, add, adding new should probably delete it, but it's better because this is a required field, so we can do that. Okay, great. So we've been over add new. We've been over save recipes. We've been over delete. We've been over clear pictures, add pictures. We need to go over email and print. And one more macro before that, and that is the ingredients. We have the ability to remove ingredients, which I really, really like. And so, but it can be a little tricky and I want to go. So notice if we've got some ingredients here, and then let's just say we've got, well, let's, oh, let's do beef juice again. Okay, so we have these and we've decided we're going to save it, right? So we've saved our recipe. So we have these two ingredients, but what if I want to delete an ingredient? Well, the best way to do that is to just simply determine what row it's on. So the first thing is I want to know when I select a row, I want this little icon to appear here. That icon is called delete ingredient button or delete ing button. And I want it to show up directly here and that's going to be based on selection change. I also want to highlight the row. And to do that, we're going to use conditional formatting. So if we go into conditional formatting, I got a few rules. And I also want, notice one open row. So as soon as we add something, it opens a row. So let's go over the conditional formatting here. Yes, this is a large application. I worked hard on it for you. So basically we have three rules that we, just three rules. These are for the alternating rows. It gives in the color and there's two conditions right and i11 notice our notice it starts on 12 our first one starts on 12 but i put 11 and if you do that then the one after it is going to always be colored too in other words it's going to leave us a blank row which is what we want that's also colored and also want for even rows so even rows are going to get this light brown color so notice it's equal to zero the mod of row is equal to zero Whereas in this one, the same rule based on I11 does not equal blank, but this one's one, it's going to get that little bit darker brown color. That's how we get the alternating rows. And right, and so very, very importantly, I used 11. Remember, this starts on 12, but I used 11 because I want that blank row, right? As soon as we add a row here, as soon as we keep adding it, it's going to show that that's exactly what I want, right? So that's really, really important that we have that so the user knows that they can enter the ingredient there. So what I want to do is we've got the last conditional formatting is going to be based on whatever row is selected in B29. Notice it goes away. As soon as I select something, B1 equals whatever row we selected. I can put that in B1. All right, so B1 is going to take that. So if we go into the conditional formatting back inside here, we see that B1 here, the formula is B1 is equal to the row. And we give it a format. All right, in that format, while my voice is barely holding up, bold, we want it bold. We want to give it a color of white. And we want to give it a fill. I'm going to give it a fill effect. So I'm going to use like a little bit lighter color, just some brown colors here to give it a nice darker. So I want that to differentiate between that to make sure that we understand that that's been uh, visible, that is the selected row. And the last thing what I want to do is run an event, a selection change event that places this little trash can right here on the select row so that we can delete any row if we want to. And there's a macro tied to that. If we select anything else, those are going to be gone. So how do we do that? Well, let's take a look inside the develop and visual basic back into the selection this time recipe we're going to focus on selection change all right the first thing we're going to do if target count large is greater than one then exit the sub so we don't want if the user selects more than one cell we're just going to exit out assuming they've only selected one cell the first i want to hide some shapes that they should always be hidden for example this rating toggle i almost forgot to show that to you this toggle i need to show you that Almost so many features in there I can't remember. So this basically when I select a cell here, this cell, I want this toggle to show up. How do we do that? I'll show you that in a moment. As soon as we get done with this one here, uh, this macro. Okay, so basically what I want to do is this toggle. If we select this little pop up here, this is called rating group, rating group. If I select any cell, I want it hidden. 
and I only want to select, I only want it to show up when I click here. Otherwise, I want to, so I want to hide that. I want to hide this trash can automatically, and I want to hide a few other things. So I also want to, so here, if the rating toggle here, also this one, this toggle, this is a shape, yep, called rating toggle. I want that hidden too. I know it looks, it looks like this, right? Kind of cool, right? Almost, it's almost perfect. I need to make it a little smaller, but you get the point. So, all right, so we want to hide that here. So how do we do that? So just hiding those kind of shapes are only available. We only want them to display when we create specific actions. Otherwise, so the best thing to do is just hide them right away. But I only want to hide them if they're visible. So if the rating toggle is visible equals true, then hide it. If the rating group is visible, then hide it. If the delete ingredient button, that's a little trash can, is visible, then hide it. So we're just going to hide all those things right away. If the user makes a selection to 04, 04, while we're here, 04, then I want to display this little button. Remember, this is just a shape. It's a triangle and a square. That's all it is. It is not this, which is the drop down list. It's just made to look like it so that people select it. So if it is, I want that visible, right? If they select on 04, I want to make sure that visible so I can do that with this. If the selection is 04 and nothing, then shape rating toggle visible equals true. There's a macro assigned to it that's simply going to toggle this, okay? So if they select that, there we go. Continuing on, if the user makes a selection change between G12 and I99, here G12, and I99, and I want to make sure that I contains a value, right? If they're down here, we don't want anything to happen if I doesn't contain a value. So assuming that it does, then what we want to do is I, target row, does not contain, is not empty, it does contain a value, then do a few things. One, B1 is going to take on that target row. That's going to trigger that conditional formatting. Can take that row. Then what I want with that icon, I want to place it directly on the left of column J in the target row. And I want to place it directly on the top, but a little bit uh, higher than that on the top, right? And I want to make sure it's visible. So basically, this code right here is going to make sure that that is visible. Now we've assigned a macro to this. We've got to delete it. That macro, if we take a look, assign the macro, scroll up here, we see it's called ingredient delete. If I edit that macro, it's going to go on. Let me just double check before I go back to ingredient creep. I want to make sure that we covered everything on the selection change. Okay, else B1 clear contents. What does that mean? So that means if they select here, great. But if I select anything else, I'm going to clear B1, right? When I do that, I want to make sure that that row is not selected, okay? So that's it. So now we can continue with that specific um, to ingredient delete. This is the macro that we're going to run. So basically, if I select this and I click this, I want that recipe saved and I want that deleted. Notice that it got deleted. So how do we do that? Let me add one more just so we were where we were. And then what I want to do, let's do test so it's different. One gram of test. Those are my favorite. Save that recipe. And um, what we're going to do, so now what I want to do is I want to delete, but it's a little bit tricky, right? We know that the database, if this is database 230, if I delete this item, right, let's go look in the database and the ingredients. If I delete, uh, let's go all the way down here. If I delete this 230, then this becomes 230, right? If I delete this one, this row moves up, right? If I delete that, this run becomes, and this becomes 230 because we're using a formula. I need to make sure that we also change this one here to 230. Notice we're deleting 230 here. I need to make sure that the one below moves down. So we do that. That's just the check we need to make. So that's what we're going to do. If B1 equals empty, then exit the sub, right? If we don't have a selected row, if I don't know what row has been selected, we can exit out of the sub. If I'm going to delete this one here, I need to know that B29 is the one we're going to delete. We need to put that into a variable. So the ingredient row is going to be whatever is located in B1. The last ingredient row is going to be the last. I need to know the last row. We're going to loop through all of the ones. If I'm going to delete this, we're going to change a lot, right? So I need to know the last row. In this case, the last row is 30. So we're going to do that. Um, the last row is going to be I. If I need to know if it's been saved or not. Why, if it does not equal empty, remember, why is our database row? So that is here, right? If it's, if it's not equal empty, then I need to delete it from the database. If it is empty, it hasn't been saved yet, and I just need to refresh the list. It's much easier if it hasn't been saved. But if it has been saved, we need to do all this, okay? So the ingredient database row is located in Y. 
right? If the ingredient, now I need to know if it's the last row, for example, if I just want to delete 231, it's much easier. If I just delete the last one, I don't need to make any changes because there's nothing below it. Very easy. It's the last, not only is it the last row in the database, but more importantly, it's the last row of our recipe. It's the last recipe row. So we need to know if, if it does not equal the last row. If it does not equal the last row, it means the one they want to delete, this one or this one or this one, it's not the last row. So then we need to do define for, now we need to set a loop for the recipe ingredient row equals the ingredient row plus one to the last ingredient row. What does that mean? It means let's say they want to delete this one, right? I need to do something for all of the remaining rows. I need to do something. And what do I need to check? I need to check if this row is greater than the row, then I need to change this to 17. I need to change this to 19. I need to change this to 229, and I need to change this to 230. So that's what I need to do inside the code. So if y is greater than the recipe row, then what we're going to do is we're going to reduce it by 1. The recipe database row E and the y row, this is kind of confusing. Here's the database row right here. Here's the database row right there. That's it. So all I'm going to do is reduce it by 1. So all we're doing is going into the recipe, looking at this, we're going to make this 229. We're looking at this, we're going to make it 231. Or we're going to, you know, we're going to just update that. But also, if since it's a formula, we don't necessarily need to do it. But what we do need to do is E. This one here, we need to reduce here. Sorry. This one. Because if I'm deleting this row, it's going to be, this one's going to be 29. What do I mean by that? Let's say I delete sea salt, right? I don't want it, right? 20, this row becomes on row 27, right? This, everything's going to move up. So this becomes to 27, this becomes a 29, and this becomes 30, right? So we need to also change that into the database. So again, this becomes 29, this becomes 28, this becomes 17, okay? So we're just basically reducing whatever's on income. That's all we need to do inside here. Then what we want to do is why, this is where we update the database, why is equal to y minus 1. Reduce the database row. In this case, we want to reduce it, right? 230 becomes 230. 231 becomes 230. 230 becomes 229. So we're reducing that because we're deleting one before it. So that's all we need to do. Okay, so we're just going to loop through all of the remaining receipt rows. Then what we're going to do is we're going to check if the database row is greater than whatever is located here, then delete. Delete the database row if it's greater than three. I just don't want deleting the third row, again, just in case, right? Deleting that third row could create issues because we're going to delete this formula here, which I don't want. So we just made sure it's not four. Okay, so we have that there. And again, like I said, I'd probably move this up, but it's easier when we're teaching to show you. Okay, so continuing on. So that's all we pretty much have to do. Next up, what we now to do is I just need to clear the ingredient details from G through I, basically clearing whatever's here, whatever we have here. Also, whatever's in Y, that database row, clearing that. And also, we need to hide that delete button, that icon here, deleting that here, the one that shows up here, we need to delete that. And next up, we also want to then save it and then load our ingredients, right? Saving those changes then loading the ingredients, right? That's going to automatically run it. So if I decide I want to delete beef juice but keep testing, it's going to delete that. The recipe is going to get saved. It's going to get re reset. Notice this became before it was 30. Now it's 29. So if we look in our database right here, inside our ingredient here, remember test used to be 30 and now it's 29. So we just simply reduced it before it was 30. It's all we reduced that one row. That's the important thing that you have to understand. Okay, very, very good. Now, I do want to get to the email, right, and the print. So I believe that's just going to be it. I'll do a double check to make sure we covered everything. And we're going to move these shapes back to where they belong here, hidden to keep our very screen very beautiful there. All right, we don't need them there. All right, so what we want to do is, of course, I want to be able to email this recipe. If I click email, let's assign, I actually have to assign this macro. So assign the macro, and then it's going to be recipe email, clicking OK. I want to email this entire recipe, so I'm going to put it inside a PDF and automatically email when I select that macro. And it's going to look just like this. So it creates an email. Basically, it's going to give it a subject, a butter chicken. If I open that PDF, we're going to see that that entire recipe is now inside this PDF. All the steps are here and everything is there. So how do we do that? Well, we can do that with just a little bit of code. So let's go ahead and take a look inside that code. So first of all, recipe with email. The tricky part of this is we need to set the range, right? So we know it's going to start at G. I want all the ingredients. So it's going to start out on G3, right? 
and it's going to go all the way to Q, right? And we know that. But what about the last row? It's a little bit more tricky because the last row is a shape, right? This last row is 42. I want to make sure that we include it. How are we going to get that 42? How do we know what it is? Well, we need to determine how many steps we have. We know the next step is eight. So I know I've got seven steps. Right? I know that I've got seven. If I know I've got seven steps, I also know that every step takes four rows, right? So if I decide, okay, every step is four rows, I've got seven steps, so I'm going to multiply, that's 28. So if I take that 28 and I add 14 onto it, right, I'm going to get automatically that last row, which is 42. See how we do that? We started at that. We know we've got seven. This is eight, right? We're adding one, so we've got seven current steps. So I want to get that last row. We know every step contains four rows. So we can do that with just a little bit of mess. That last row is going to equal whatever's in B13, right? That's the 8. Minus 1, that's going to give us 7. We're going to multiply that times 4. It's going to give us 28. We're adding 14 onto it because we're starting off on row 14 here. So we got to add 14 onto that. That's going to get us our last row. Once we have that, we can set the print range. We know where it's going to start in G3 all the way to Q in the last row. That's going to get the address of that is our print range. This is a string variable. Once we have that print range into a string variable, we can then use the page setup to set that print area. It's a dynamic print area based on that. So the page setup print area is equal to the print range. Here's the range, right? Now what I want to do is I want to set a file name, at least temporarily. It's going to be this work. We're going to use the current workbook path because that's the safe. We're going to add a backslash onto it. Then I'm going to add in whatever's in K3. K3 is the recipe name. I want to add that file name, recipe name. I'm going to put K3, whatever's in there. And I want to add inside that PDF, right? So I want to add in here, PDF. So basically, and, right, recipe.pdf. So that's the file name. So it's going to be the recipe name underscore the recipe and PDF, getting that file name. If for some reason that file name exists, if the directory does not equal empty, I want to make sure it's empty, then I want to kill it. That means if that file already exists in that folder, I want to delete it first. Okay. So if as long as it doesn't, this will delete it just in case. Now I'm going to export it. Export this page based on the setup, the file name, right, and false, right? So if we take a look inside the comments here, we can see that IntelliSense is going to show up. Ignore print areas, right? We want to keep that at print areas. So that's the information. And then, of course, we're going to be at type as fixed file format, right? That format's going to be a PDF, right? The file name, right? The quality, we can leave that empty. And that's all we need just to make sure that we're not ignoring the print areas. Then we're going to set the outlook. This has been defined, dimensioned as an object. This has been dimensioned as an object below. We're going to create, this creates that Outlook application. This creates an Outlook email. And with that Outlook email, we're going to set the two to nothing. We're going to add an attachment. That attachment is going to be that file name that we just created here. Now we're going to do a subject, we'll add a subject. Basically, that's going to be that uh, recipe name and the word, and the space and the word recipe. Nothing in the body and display. We're going to display. We don't want to send that email. We want to display. We don't even have a to address. That's it. That's all we need to do to create the email. Now, print is going to be very, very similar. Again, we're going to determine the last row. We're going to determine the print range. And we're going to determine this, right? So actually, I do have to show you that drop down list. And then the range, right? G3 through Q. That's going to the same address. This time, we're setting up the page setup, the print area, just as we did before, except now we're printing it out. OK, very, very cool. All right, I want to show you this, right? When we select it, as mentioned before, we select it. What about this toggle? If we right click, we click, well, actually, this is a group, so we need to right click the individual items. We right click inside and click Assign Macro. We click on, see, it's called Rating Toggle. Now, this Rating Toggle is very easy. All I want to do is basically show that rating group Show that rating group, maybe show or hide. This rating group is simply the stars right here. This is a group of a bunch of stars. So how do I do that? So that's just this. So if the rating group was visible, it's a toggle, right? So if I click it once, it goes on, clicking it, turning off. So it's a toggle, I meaning it goes, it goes on and off just like that. So basically, if it's currently visible, then we're going to hide it, else we're going to show it. What about the macro that's assigned to that? Well, that's called rating select. When I select a rating, I want that rating to appear. Now, how do we do that? Well, we do that very specifically in the names that were created. So if I click on here, 
and I toggle it, toggle that one more time, and I select here, and I'm going to show in these numbers. Let's take a look inside what we have here. So take a look at this. I've given them very specific names. Rating one is that one star down here. Let's move this over a little bit. Rating two is the same name for both of those two stars. So if a user selects on either one, it's called rating two. Rating three, obviously, we're not going to go over rating one. But basically, they're all named based on the rating that they're within. Rating five, notice rating five has five different shapes. They're all called the same thing. So when a user selects on one of those, I know it's called rating five. If the user selects on one of these, I know it's called rating four. If I remove the word rating, what's, what am I left with? I'm left with one, two, three, four, or five. If I take that and I place that one, two, three, or four, or five right directly inside B6, I can set the rating. And then all I need to do is set the shape. So the rate level as a long dimension, the rate level is equal to replace. Remember, we're removing the word rating. I'm replacing it with nothing. We're using the application color. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm for each rate shape in recipes, if it's the star rating is zero, then we're going to hide. First of all, I want to hide any ratings, right? So when I change the rating, if I if I change this from two to four, right, I need to make sure that we're hiding everything else first. I don't know what's currently there, really. I could probably know, but I want to hide all the others just in case, right? So the best thing to do is just hide everything, right, that can turn the word star rating. Everything that contains star rating, I'm going to hide. So we're doing that through here. Everything that contains star rating, we're hiding. We're not deleting it, we're hiding it. Then what I want to do is the recipe, right, shapes rate level, remember that's one, and star rating, I want to show. I want to show only the one based on the rate level that we set right here, if they've selected two. Next up, I want to set B6 to that rate level. Then I want to show the rating group. I want to hide that, excuse me, I want to hide the rating group. We don't need that. And the rating toggle I want to hide also. So what does that mean? That means when they select something here, we want to hide this, right? And I want to hide this. And I want to show only the rating they selected, like this. So that's all we have to do. So now four, now as soon as they save it, that four is going to be saved in the database. That's all we have to do. Relatively simple. All right, let me make sure we've gone over, do a quick review, see if we covered everything. We covered how to create categories dynamically, how to search for recipes based on both recipe name and ingredients, how to load those recipes based on one of those filters or based on a selection of those, how to load those, how to load the ingredients up and how to load those steps up, how to selection and load and load those pictures up. I don't think we went over the browse, but that's okay. That's just very simple how we browse for a picture. We covered that here with the browse also. We know how to clear a picture. We also know how to rotate picture. We went over how to create a really cool drop down list. Also, the macro that's been assigned to there is also the toggle, just in so in other words. Also, the macro, let me see, that's a group. But if you select on any individual star, the macro, let me just select on individual. The macro that's been assigned is also the toggle. That's kind of important, right? So maybe what if it's full with five stars? Notice you can't select on the right. You can't select on the box, but you can select here. So it's the same action selecting on the stars or selecting on the cell itself. If it's one star and we select on a cell or if we add new, right, and we select on a cell, we want the same to show up, right? We, or clicking on here, we want it to show up. So that's how we do it, simply just by selecting, running the same macro here. Okay, so we won't show you that. I'm showing you how to remove and save steps, right? How to rotate this really cool picture, how to use a create a cool slideshow in Excel, saving and deleting recipes, clearing the pictures, printing the recipes, emailing the recipes, and probably something I forgot. All right, so I'll be adding to this. I'll be creating features, but it really depends on you. What kind of feature would you want to see on this? Did I miss something? Do I need to spend more focus on it? Let me know your thoughts because I'm putting all of that along with a brand new training and a brand new updated workbook. It's going to be all inside our Patreon. So I hope you will join us there. That's an incredible platform. And when we reach 500 patrons, there's a brand new free course for everybody there. It's going to be an incredible course. All of our patrons get that as soon as we get to 500. We're about 20, 22% there. So in a few months, we will be there or less depending upon you. So join us there. It's just a few dollars a month and it would really help us. All right, thanks so much for this incredible recipe manager. Next week will be a brand new one, and we'll see you then.